The time has finally arrived, ladies and gentlemen, for us to crown the champion here in Montreal, Canada for the StarCraft II World Championship Series Final Circuit event. I am Nathanius. It has been my pleasure to bring you the tournament all weekend long. I am joined by our In Control and Rotterdam as we get ready for our grand final. It's been a hell of a year, and one man has stood above the rest as number one, Roddy. Yeah, not by a little bit, but by a pretty damn large margin, which we can see in the WCS circuit standings as well. Serral's amazing, Serral's absolutely fantastic, but he's got one hell of a challenger here, Nate. I mean, yes, they met in Valencia, and at that point, Serral was still too strong, but boy, oh boy, did Rainer look mighty fine as well this weekend. In control, he's been unstoppable, but Rainer, as Roddy mentioned, has been that rising star in the second half of the year. It's been kind of funny. Uh, Serral, on his half of the bracket, has struggled. Two series went to game five, even against Jon Snow, which was supposed to be really lopsided, had one loss in a dicey other game. Meanwhile, on the other side, Rainer's had a couple of close series as well, but I would say even higher level opponents almost, or at least more storied. But he's, when he's won, he's looked really good. This is uh, two titans clashing in the finals that certainly are the two best players here. You know, Nate, small fun fact. Of course, uh, WCS weekend doesn't start here, right? We've got Challenger before this. Serral won WCS Europe Challenger, as he always does. In that tournament, he played five series. Four out of five were against Zerk. He won all four, of course. This tournament, in group stage, he played two best of threes, won both both against Zerk, round of 16, quarterfinals, semifinals, all Zerk. Cerro played 10 series to get where he is right now, nine of them against Zerk, won all nine. A lot of Pretty. Zerks in that non-Korean scene. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of Zerks in that non-Korean scene. Who Gosh. would thunk it? Um, you know, well, it we're just pretty well. We're just waiting for our battle cruisers to shoot and move, and maybe something will change in the future. But we do have our final bracket for the tournament here. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a hell of a ride. Really exciting weekend. A bit more competitive than some of our other final brackets for these circuit events this year. And it all boils down to Cyril and Rayner. Not to dismiss, of course, the accomplishments of players such as Time, one of the furthest reaching Chinese Terrans we've ever had in a tournament. But uh, this is it. It's crazy to think we're finally here. The circuit is about to conclude and Cyril could win all four events. And our top eight of the WCS circuit standings could still change. I mean, this is a story that was pretty much dead last year after the first day where we kind of knew our top eight already. For Lambo, this is a very, very scary. Because right now, Lambo is qualified for the global finals. But if Rayner wins it, Rayner will knock Lambo out. And as we continue on, we're going to do a little bit more analysis. We'll bring the players out soon. But first, we wanted to show you the players' road to the finals. Being the first one to make it four times in the Grand Finals doesn't really, I don't really think too much about it, but the more I think about it, it sounds, uh, it sounds very cool at least. Nice that you made it this far, but now that I'm in the Finals, I don't think I'm going to lose. It's my first time in the Grand Finals. It feels amazing. I'm really happy. It stopped me last time in Valencia in the semi-final several, but now I've changed and I think I will do better. Times have changed. This is the World Championship Series. Confidence coming out of both players. Cyril, ever the, ever the calm man, though. Not to say that he thinks it's anything crazy. It's cool in control to be in the <laughs> finals of every single tournament this year. I like the way he said it. Yeah, he was like, the more I think about it, he's like, it sounds nice, I guess. He's like, <laughs> he just kind of exists in his own little bubble. But to be honest, we laugh, we joke, but that's part of what makes him so great. He's not thinking about BlizzCon. He's not thinking about how he hasn't lost it. He's just like, each series, I'm going to win it. Yeah, I, I love it. I mean, once again, to go back to his Twitter. Take a look at his Twitter feed over the weekend. Do you think he oh, tweeted wow, once? Won. Wow, hey, yeah. what do you know? Do you, think, at, wow. do you think there's a single tweet about how beautiful Montreal is? No, I'm sure he thinks it, but he's like, no, update one, update one, update one. You gotta love it. All he knows how to do is win, just like our wonderful host here. We're gonna give it over to Smix to introduce our players on the stage for the Grand Finals.
Montreal, it is time. It has been an amazing three days of StarCraft II with all of you. We've seen some fantastic victories, some surprising upsets, but now it all comes down to this. This is a true David versus Goliath match as we have the youngest player to ever make it to the WCS Grand Finals, taking on the Finnish Juggernaut. Please welcome your two Grand Finalists, Raynor and Cyril. It's been a long year of StarCraft II action, but it all boils down to this. Cyril on the cusp of true, never before seen glory in the WCS, number one in rankings. We'll see him for sure at BlizzCon, but that fourth championship, no, one will, no one's ever come close to matching that. Well, I mean, Neeb last year, I guess it was something that we talked a little bit about. He, he looked really good, but this is just a new level. This is just something else. Uh, and like we kind of joked and talked about earlier, it's just fun to see Cyril build on top of this. It's, it doesn't mean much to him. It's another 20,000 bucks. It's a, another birth to a tournament. He already has three twos, so it doesn't do anything for him except for build on that tradition that he's mounting right now. And it's so cool because when you hear him talk again, it seems to be just that for him. He's just like, I want to win every game I play. Historically, things don't look too good for Reyna when he goes up against Cyril. They've had four series so far. Officially, Cyril won all four. Map score 10 and 1 in favor of Cyril. But I do believe that Reyna has learned a lot from that series in Valencia. I think back then, he really went into it with the mindset, I'm ready to show that I'm just as good as Cyril. I'm going to do the same thing. He wasn't ready. I think this time we're going to see a different approach, and I hope it works out for young Reyna. Can't wait to see how this one shakes up. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy our grand final. This is WCS Montreal. It's grand finals time, and we are finally at the end of the tournament. It's been a long road. A lot of players have fallen by the wayside, and at the end of it, there's just these two standing. I am Pig. Joining me is Zombie Girl for this finals cast. I'm so excited for this ZVC. The storylines are amazing, but let's get the introductions out of the way. We're on Fracture for the first game of this best of seven. In the top left, as the Blue Zerg, currently a three-time champion, can it be a four-time? It is Cyril. And down here in the bottom right-hand side, looking to become the youngest WCS champion in the history of this tournament circuit, looking to break the laser focus of his opponent. In the bottom right, representing Exceed Esports and hailing from Italy, give it up for Raynor! He wanted Cyril to win against Lambo because he wanted to be the one to take him down. The confidence from this guy, the enthusiasm about this game, it's contagious. It really is, and it's something you've got to have as a competitor is that hunger to face the best and take them down. The road to the championship is always going to be a hard one, but if you take down the best players on the way there, you 100% know you really are the absolute top of the game. And Interestingly enough, we are here on Fracture, and there's six Zerglings coming out very early 
First Terrell, it was just a pool first, more of a defensive build with a bit of light pressure than anything else. I think he was expecting Raynor to potentially do an early spawning pool, but Raynor's actually taking a bit more of a defensive stance here with the hatchery first. That's very interesting. I wonder what Terrell is thinking of having to face Raynor. I mean, he's done nothing but ZVZs this entire tournament, so he certainly warmed up for it. But typically, he faces Protoss in the grand finals of anything that he participates in. So this is a bit of a change of pace in that regard. But six Ooh. Lings already changing things up as those two Lings of Rainer awkwardly popped out. He's now down to five, and that drone run away. Yeah, this is a nice little bit of harassment, of course, trying to threaten this around on the Zerglings. Does force an extractor trick there. It keeps the drone alive, but another drone is going to get focused down. Several here with just six slow Zerglings all already getting a very nice start. It isn't until the Queen pops out that those Zerglings are pushed out. That that four of them live. That's just <laughs> not really supposed to happen there. Uh, <laughs> we just got the extractor trick too, so the minerals, a bit of a difference, but um, very small things in the beginning of the game. I just, I, I feel like Rainer has proven that like nerves don't necessarily get to him. He was tested in WCS in Valencia. He was tested in Korea. And to be at the grand finals, yes, it's definitely different up against the Titan himself. But Rainer seems like, as I said, always up for the challenge. So while I would be worried for other competitors to be like, well, that doesn't seem like a lot, mm. but like, what is their mental stage right now? I'm not sure I'm worried for Rainer. Yeah, he's shown that he has this sort of vigor to him where he doesn't seem to get too shaken up by little things going awry. One of the things that we really have seen in Reynolds play this weekend is coming back in scrappy situations, not getting phased by things that are a little bit unusual. We have a lot of Lings on the way, despite the Roaches and the plus one starting. Uh, that's, that's even more Lings are on the way. There we go. That is enough Lings to say that he is wow. trying to trick Raynor. And is Raynor falling for it? I mean, he doesn't have a Baneling Nest. Raynor has seen the Evolution Chamber upgrading. He Hello. doesn't even have his own Zergling speed. He's going to need to wall off very quickly. And that third base is exceptionally exposed right now. Even with this wall off here, remember, it's a very short rush distance. That third hatchery is going to have to be canceled. Definitely, but it will buy a lot of time for this evolution chamber they just slapped down to actually have some health to perhaps survive. He does not have a lot of DPS, though. Just the two queens, no roaches, no spine crawlers. He's actually going to go ahead and double wall here oh. as Daryl has so many links. That double wall is just in time, but it's a very weak wall. It's starting to take damage, but there's not a lot of surface area. Cyril trying desperately to break through that evolution chamber, but he can not breach the wall. Raynor holds on for now, but it was not an all-in attack. Cyril has sniped the third, and there we go. Tries to go in and catch the cancel on the evolution chamber, but Raynor very quick to get that Roach Warren down. Think you're gonna run by me? No, Raynor's the <laughs> run by guy. Ah, uh, that was that was really scary. I wonder if Sarah would have done better had he just. Um, I mean, it's it's a tough call. You guarantee the third cancel, but could he have maybe broken down the wall if he was there a little bit faster? Evolution chambers were a little bit weaker. Of course, Rainer has to break down his own wall, and he's still not going to have speedlings or banelings. He does want to go ahead and continue mm. skipping that portion of a typical ZVZ. And he's at a decent worker count, even though his third is now heavily delayed. Yeah, oh. he's going to try and change it up with the tech to gain an advantage since the third base was so far behind now for Raynor, dropping that Spire in the back. A lot of Zerglings have been forced out here, and without Link Speed even on the way, they really are not the best unit. We can see Steril <laughs> taking, uh, I mean, it's kind of a good angle, but the Queens add the firepower from the back. They are able to repel that, and Steril, if he can trade those Zerglings out for uh, or Raynor, if he can trade his Zerglings out for any of Serral's units, that's actually a good trade for him because those Zerglings are useless the longer this game goes. Yeah, they are. Um, the Roaches, so they to be a little worried about being surrounded. They only have so much of these slow lings to help them out if they are. But he does have some eyes on the main attack pass from Serral, so he knows that there's no more lings on the way. It is going into that Roach phase, but for Serral, he was the first one to kind of trick Raynor here. Raynor is now going to try and trick Serral, at least get some free overlords. The Overseer is most likely to get the scout, there we go. It's, it's right toward it. He's always so on top of sending these overseers through the bases. Serral's overseer spots the Spire, almost finished, immediately turns it around, starts up three queens. He's already ahead on the plus two range upgrade, but there's already a Hydrogen down, so I think it might be a fast Lurker transition behind wow. the Muters. This is very tricky play from Raynor. I mean, as soon as you see the Spire, and it is primarily what you're scouting for, you think, okay, yeah, I did it. I mean, he did send the Changeling to the Natural, just didn't make it, so 
There is definitely a chance that, I mean, he made, he made Mutas. He's going to be able to clear up the Overlords. But I guess the real trick is going to be how fast those Lurkers are going to come. Steril has Roach Speed on the way, plus two about halfway done. Of course, he's building Spore Crawlers and doesn't see an opportunity to attack prior to the Mutas coming out here. But those Lurkers, that's really going to be tricky. He's even building additional Spines to ensure that he doesn't die due to his uh, lack of Roach dedication. Yeah, it's a good choice here. Oh. I mean, this is Fracture. It's a very small map. Roach pushes are very powerful, and even if you control the skies, uh, you don't have a lot of time to wail on those roaches from above before they get to your side of the map. So the Mutalists here are looking to scout around. They're going to see not too many drones on that base. And I think Raynor is immediately going to have to come home with those Mutas because that is a ton of queens and roaches pushing across this map. There's no way the Lurker Den is going to be done. And it's not just the Lurker Den. It also has to be the Lurkers. Maybe Raynor can give up his third base and then try and hole up in his natural. But would that still be enough for Serral to say, job well done? I feel like it would be. Serral is just... He's going to be here way too soon on such a small map. Wow, the Roach is just flooding in. They see they've got the numbers advantage. Serral not even going to wait for the Queens. Does start to land those transfusers. The Spine Crawl is adding some very important damage, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Raynor just does not have the numbers, and Serral with such a decisive push. The Queens more than a match for those Mutalisks, and just a few Roaches and Hydralisks not going to be able to stop the onslaught of Zerg from Serral. Too good of a push from our blue Zerg. And that's his Rainer's last ditch effort there to pull the drones. GG is called. Serral takes map number one in quite the little, like, mental game. That was the definition, I feel, of a mental game. Tricks mm. from both parties. It's such a fascinating build, isn't it? Going for the Roach Warren in the Evolution Chamber, really making it look like you're skipping out on the Ling speed, and then just flooding across with about 25, 30 Zerglings gets the snipe on the hatch, forces to a big response. Even getting those evolution chambers down in the wall, cancelling the Roach Warren. These are all pickups which added value. They slowed down Raynor, and it was just a very decisive way to start off the series. I like the choice here from Serral to start off with the early Zergling pressure, to start off with that tricky kind of hidden Zergling speed. It gives him a lot of momentum, puts Raynor on the back foot. I agree with that, yes. It, it worked out pretty darn well. You know, my kind of question, though, we're coming in here with, uh, as I said, lots of CVCs for Cyril. Um, so not only does he have a lot of practice, he's also been tested in many ways. I feel like Scarlet kind of proved that he might have some weaknesses against Mutas. Lambo was almost successful in his attempts to go Mutas in the game. There's a couple of tricks in ZVZ. There's a mm. couple of weird compositions, you know, Roach versus Roach. You know, it's a lot about those numbers games. Is Rainer, was that his attempt to go with the Spire? Is it because he kind of saw that? And he was thinking like, well, I got to do some tricky tech things to actually get the lead. Or was that just a, you know, is this all just a coincidence? I'm reading too much into it because Serral, I mean, even if that was Rainer's intention, Serral seems to have already adapted to any Muta play. It's fascinating the mind games that go on in these players' heads. I'm going to agree with you, Zombie Grub. I think that Serral, he actually chose that as his first map. The next one lost and found is Raynor's pick. But going up against Raynor, what's he displayed recently in all these online cups he's been excelling in? It's lots of upgraded Zerglings, lots of Neutalists, lots of counter attack and harassment focused play. Not a lot of front on fights. So Serral there with a very clever build in game one. We're heading into game two. It's lost and found in the top right. Current champion up 1 0. It is the Blue Zerg, NC Sports, Serral. Down here in the bottom left-hand side, representing Exceed Esports and looking for that first ever championship. In the red, give it up for Raynor. I don't know about that crowd. I would assume he's now the fan favorite. Cyril being four times in a row, not that that's, uh, it's already amazing if it's four, but like in a row with his GS over to the world victory. I mean, he would just, he would prove, if he also wins BlizzCon, that he's beaten StarCraft. Um, <laughs> but Raynor, again, that lovable guy that everyone seems to be cheering for. And of course, we all just want to have good games at the end of the day, all right? Yeah, I mean, we, we all want that stereotypical good games, but <laughs> it's just the story, as always, through the second half of this year has been, who can stop Serral? Can they stop him? And it's been a lot of scrapes with death this tournament. Serral has bled a little bit against multiple opponents, but he's managed to weather the storm. He's been going through Zerg after Zerg, and here in the grand finals, Raynor is the last obstacle in his past. Raynor also, of course, the underdog, which has so much support for him here with his first time in the grand finals. 
Well, we have some oh, macro openers here. It may change in a bit. Um, I want to ask you about the, the, the amount of ZDZ Serral has played. Do you believe that that is part of the reason that Serral has been dropping maps, that, we've been learn that the Zergs have been learning from each other, talking to each other? There is a weakness mm. for Serral? I mean, I think Lambo kind of pointed out that he thought Serral looked probably the most vulnerable he has in some of his games yesterday and today where he has been a little bit overly defensive. He has been a little bit predictable, and we've seen players like Scarlet, players like Lambo, kind of take these leads against him in the work account. In the early mid-game, they're often just playing a little bit greedier because Serral hasn't been mixing in as many attacks. That's why I love that change up in this last game. Not only is it good to do a Roach Queen push on a small map against someone who favors Mutalist play, but he hasn't been doing a lot of that, and his opponents have been cutting corners. He's been letting that happen. Now I think he's learned from some of those lost games, and he's starting to turn it around. That's, that's absolutely true. I mean, we saw Raynor, he did not bother going for that speed. He saw the Roach Warren at the front and assumed that he was, he was, you know, Sarah was just going to go ahead and play a slower game with Roaches and a slower third, and he tried to cut the corners, and that did kind of start the snowball. He barely survived, and then he did try something sneaky. I mean, that was a lot of gas and, um, and minerals to go oh, into yeah. both Aspire, Mutas, Hydra Den, and Lurkers. So that was a... Uh, I was quite greedy playing, kind of a weird fashion, but certainly the lack of link speed earlier on. They also did not have Baneling Nest in that last game, but here we see they both take third bases with no about it. They both are going to make the Baneling Nest, but it's Serral making links first. Rainer slightly behind him, going for a few more drones. Yeah, Serral here committing to a little bit heavier Ling Bane aggression than we're used to seeing from the Finn. Four Banelings already morphing on the front. And that's a way bigger commitment than he normally goes for. Often we've seen him poking with maybe eight, maybe 12 Zerglings. This time it's 18 Zerglings, four of which are turning into Banelings. And he's going to be putting the pressure on nice and early. But Raynor so far locked up tight. He wants to defend this five worker lead that he had going for him. He's continuing to drone hard behind this very good defense from the Italian. This is a little dicey. Oh, that was really nice trade for Serral there. He wants to get rid of the other Ooh. two. He gets rid of one, so his bailings would still win out even to take the pop. Yeah, a little bit of an overextension at one point there. Was trying to distract for these Banelings coming through the middle, but nice split by Raynor. Does end up deflecting that and uh, maintains a roughly equal work account behind it. Interestingly enough, Serral always with such a fast Evo chamber. He's already got plus one range on the way behind it. His lair is delayed though, focusing more on droning up for now and building a few more Zerglings to stop any potential counterattack. He might have been the first one to make Zerglings, but he also went really quickly back into drones. Now Raynor, to his credit, immediately noticed with you know, his Overlord saying like, oh, you're not really committing a lot to this, was not far behind. He just yeah, did not have quite a quick, as quick of an evolution chamber. So they're both going up to lair. And uh, eventually we'll see Roach Horns from uh, both of them. We saw some really fantastic games from Serral with Roaches. It really, I don't want to say when he gets to Roaches, he's, you know, he's unbeatable, because that's not true unless you have a spy or something like that. But man, he just makes the, com he makes Roaches not look like a boring unit, basically. That's yeah, why I like watching Serral. You know, absolutely. I was talking to Scarlet before as well as Snoot and... The consensus amongst a lot of the Zerg players backstage is if you go into the Roach vs. Roach tunneling claw war in the mid game, it's not going to be a winnable situation <laughs> against Serral. He's just so hard to beat. You've got to try and surprise him. You've got to get some tech switches going. Here we go, Raynor with a nice little counter attack. Gets the Queen just barely with the last hit. A nice little trade off there. Uh, speaking of those surprises and tech swaps, we did actually Ooh. not see. Oh, there is a Roach Warren. But it's actually plus one melee, so the, you're going to assume when you see that evolution chamber moving like that, it's you know probably just going to be on the plus one missile. I don't believe Sarah will not bother scouting for Aspire, though, but his lings are denied. We'll see if the Overseer comes in in a timely manner. Actually, that, he's going to go over speed. And that Baneling already is a little bit of a tell. That Baneling was desperate to explode yeah. on a single Zergling. It's not every day you see a player of Raynor's caliber so eager to sacrifice the Baneling just to deny scouting. So this Overseer is going to be very keen to get in there. You can see Raynor very eager to deny that information that Serral is so reliant up, upon in this matchup. This is uh, really scary. Well, this is really scary. Bailing gets, uh, okay, only two drones. Uh, nice pop over oh, there. Maybe get a cancel. Phase. Nice plays by Raynor. That melee upgrade well underway. And the micro on the Zerglings. Ooh, very ballsy by Raynor. Really just committing into a crazy engagement, but not giving those Bailings the connection they wanted. So he did see the Spire confirmed here, but I do, like, 
I mean, it feels almost inevitable that Spyro will be scouted. The ideal scenario, it's not, and they lose a bunch of overlords and, and snowballs. But as long as it, I feel like these Zerg players up against Daryl, they're like, well, if I don't die to the Roach push before my meters are ready, then I actually like the difference of composition, the yeah. difference of play style. So unless Daryl plans on moving, well, actually, I think time is already gone. He didn't have Roach speed. Uh, the meters will be out. It will be a Ling. Muta game with, I assume, Banelings eventually and Stripical Hooks. That was how Scarlet took a game. Absolutely. We saw Lambo very close on this exact same map in their fifth series, uh, fifth set there to closing it out. So it feels like this is the style that players are saying, hey, this is the Kryptonite to take down Steril. But you know what? reynolds has been doing this style for weeks. This isn't something he's just come up with on the fly. This is Raynor's favorite way of playing Zerg versus Zerg. He likes to run by. He likes to try and hit your mineral lines. He doesn't want to just fight you in a Roach versus Roach headbutt war. He's capable of it, but he's not going to do that as his preferred style. That is an opening. Uh, yeah, the Queen was not there in time. These are plus one lings, so they're going to be chipping Fast. They Not always just the find drones, the but also the spore crawler. Ooh. I wondered if he was going to try and intentionally target that, and that's exactly what he wow. did. Wow, those mutilists dive too high energy queens going down very suddenly there. No transfusers left available. Ten Whoa. workers going down, even the hatchery taking damage. Zombie grab Raynor is taking control of this game. Maybe Sarah was so focused on making sure to defend against the mutas that he was a little underprepared about the amount of lings, and that queen was just so close to stopping this whole snowball effect. Rain is just going to make more mutas, more lings, and that fourth base is now vulnerable because the spore crawler is targeted Ooh. by the lings. That goes down, and if you cannot secure a fourth base when the muta count is low, it just gets so much harder as the game goes on. That fourth base going down is huge. As you said, there's no creep connecting it right now. All of the queens got reset. There's no mobile anti-air. Steril being forced back to three bases. Meanwhile, a fourth base a macro hatch, a second macro hatch, all on the way back at home for Raynor. His production is out of control. This is looking like a, I don't want to say dominance, but it has a lot of momentum for Raynor. This can really snowball with the mutas. You you think about the mutas, and then suddenly it's the 40 banelings that come through. But Terrell did get some fast tunneling claws, but an overseer is already here. Those plus one melee lings just tear apart the roaches, who are now just essentially going to try and go for a queen, but even that's not going to work. Yeah, that main base has gone down as well. Serral knocked back to two hatcheries. He's trying to use the Roach counterattacks to bring himself back into this game. It was what he used against Lambo to crawl back from what looked like a very dire position. But so far, Raynor has been all over it. I'm getting all wiggly jiggly. I feel like Raynor's actually going to be able to do it in this second game. He's not going to let the, the crowd, the grand finals, whatever, make him afraid. He is playing a style that he would naturally excel at and it is working quite well as Serral is now just held up on two bases while building his main. And there are those Banelings. How many, how many units does Serral have in general? He's a decent army supply, but can he protect his Hydras or will the Muta snowball? Most of his roaches are on the other side of the map. He's going for a huge gamble, hiding this big patch down, uh, pack of them down here. He's also sneaking some out on the north side as well. But I don't know if he's got enough at home. That is a ton of Zergling, Baneling, Muta. The Spore Crawlers are not enough anti-air. The Hydras are not going to be able to stand up against these speed Banelings either. Banelings coming in from the south as well dominates the drone line. The Hydras desperately running away, but they're on their own creep. So the Banelings do eventually collide. Steril down below 100 supply has no answer to the Mutas. His Roaches are currently being cleaned up by Lings. There's the tap out. Raider take a point of the board. Nice comeback there in the second game for Raynor takes control of the game and ties it up one-to-one -one with that trademark style. The upgraded Zerglings finding the Queen Snipes, finding their way into the base and isolating the weak points of Serral. So cool to see this 16-year-old player unfazed on the biggest stage of his career. That was a really nice showing of that style. But my question is going to have to be, is he going to be allowed to continue to do that style or does it have weaknesses once Serral says, oh, okay, that's what you're going to do? You know, it's fascinating because the next map is Acid Plant, and that's a big map. You're definitely not doing the Roach Queen push from game one on, <laughs> on Acid Plant. That's going to take forever to get across the map. Uh, maybe if you break down the rocks, you know, and you've taken the, the main base below you, uh, the third base below your main, potentially, but it's going to be tough. So, Nidus Worms, of course, can also be somewhat dangerous against a Zergling Baneling into Mutalist play. There's a lot of different options. 
Uh, but for now, Raynor, he keeps finding these openings, these holes in the wall. And the constant run by style, it's been paying dividends. We keep talking about what the answer is to him. Is it just a queen permanently on guard duty in that <laughs> wall on all position? Is it just never giving him the opening, or do you have to do something special? Ah, uh, that is a very good question. I think the one Sarah was asking himself. Now that that did, you know, definitely snowball a little bit because that queen wasn't in position. So I don't want to say that is the magic pill that you take to defeat Sarah, but it was definitely a, a really fun composition, and it is something that is different that Sarah is going to have continued difficulty up against. But all both of these guys can change up. There's so many styles, openings, and tricks in this matchup. But we are going to go into game number three. It's Acid Plant. It's all tied up in this best. Of of seven series for the grand finals of WCS Montreal in the bottom right as the blue Zerg, he is Cyril. His focus never seems to waver. And up here in the top left hand side, showing some incredible discipline so far. He's keeping it together here. He's tied up the series, but he wants to take it further. He wants that first championship. Give it up for the Red Zerg. It is Raynor. I don't think it's too cheesy to say that's a Cinderella story, but I'm getting some like Cinderella fantasy type <laughs> tingling here because Raynor. Not only has he only been at two WCS, it's the second one because he just wasn't old enough yeah. for the first two of the year. But he also almost didn't make it into the groups. There's some errors here and there. So this is really just coming from the very, very bottom and potentially making it not just the top of this tournament, but in the top eight for the global finals at BlizzCon. That would be... That would be a story right there. We've been whispering about it from the group stages, haven't we? We've been going... You know, if Raynor wins, technically, he's still able to make it to BlizzCon. And now he's here in the Grand Finals. He's tied up a game of peace with Cyril. Still got a long road ahead of him, but things are looking very promising. And uh, no matter what happens at the end of today, I know he's going to have a very bright career over the next few years. I, you consider... So when Cyril was 16, I feel like... So that was three years ago, right? So 2015. Yeah. I think he was, that was when around he was starting to show like, you know, he was promising. I think he took a couple maps off of Jadong, if I'm remembering my timeline correctly, maybe that was 2014. But the point is, like, Cyril, he's really come into his own in the last two years. So, mm -hmm. I mean, with, with Rainer being 16, like, fresh to 16, and already in the finals of WCS, that's just like, they keep getting younger and they keep getting better. All right, like, that's really scary for StarCraft. <laughs> The, the young brain is just so plastic, right? You know, the high speed, the constant mental flexibility. And Raynor, you know, he lives and breathes this game. He trains hard, and he's shown what that dedication can bring. It's not something that just sprang up overnight. It's years of hard practice and dedication, studying play styles, builds, and honing his mechanics, his ability to execute quickly on the fly. And it looks like, once again, he's going to be diverging from the most stock standard play. We've said it all tournament long. You don't want to necessarily play a straight up game against Serral. You want to play a style which creates some strategic differentiation. And that's what Raynor is doing. He's still got a quick third, but he's going that fast evolution chamber straight into the melee upgrade. Yes, indeed. Really strong ling once, lings once again. Can Serral get any type of scout on this? Maybe two lings sneak on past, or maybe he's not thinking about it. The third that he scouted was only so much, like seconds later, than his own. But ideally, you would be able to scout it nice and quick before you suddenly click on the lings and say, hold on here, that's plus one melee. But you know what you can do before you click on the lings? You can also just make a ton of your own lings. Uh, yeah, that works too. So <laughs> he's on an even drunk out right now, but that's a mm. lot of lings. He's he actually had... skipped the baneling nest as well. Yeah, he had some success with a ling flood uh, on the first game. So and there's no wall at all here. Oh, yeah, I mean, the ling speed, of course, is done for Raynor, but he just does not have as many lings. The queen's going to be vital to the defense. Now, does Daryl go for the natural, or does he just snipe the third? I think the snipe on the third is the smarter decision. It's the safer call, and that indeed is what he's going for. It's not quite finished, so it doesn't have that one point of armor, which gives it the mm. Five ability against the Zerglings, but a nice wrap around. Two of Serral's reinforcing lings are taken down. He's forced to pull back for now. Both players respecting each other, and Serral has not droned at all behind this. He's yeah. actually just waiting for that Roach Warren to finish. He does not have an evolution chamber, no intention to go into a lair. It's more lings, couple of roaches. Rainer so far not getting any scouting because he's dealing with these lings, but he is making his own attack. He's preparing for it. He's going to have plus one. And while roaches sound like the better unit, they're really not 
lot in these yeah. low unit situations, especially against upgraded links. When melee hits, that's going to make these links way more valuable for Raynor. But the Queen's come up to defend the third base for now. That plus one melee upgrade is not done yet. It's actually better for Raynor to hold off on these trades, but he doesn't know what we know. He does not know about the mass of roaches starting to spill out of Serral's production. He has no idea, but luckily for him, he's still massing Zerglings. We're really gonna, like, there's, there's no test here of like, well, that person made seven more drones or they can they hold. It's a test of plus one melee lings versus regular lings and a nice handful of roaches at this point. He's now up to 12 if they can. Ooh. To protect each other, they can do kind of well. That's a nice catch for Raynor. Very nice wrap around. Even though Raynor's down in army supply, those roaches don't deal damage anywhere near as fast as the Zerglings of Raynor. But Raynor realizes that's just so much army out of Serral. He disengages with part of his units. He realizes counterattacks, mobility are the answer. He does not want to just attack into the reinforce of Serral. He wants to split him up and use the mobility of those Zerglings with the upgrades. He did not manage to get into the main base. There's a bit of a lack of scouting there. And, uh, okay, he did try and drone a little bit. He might just be trying to get away with little edges. This, this is this is both of them continuing mostly <laughs> entirely army. So I see that and I'm a little bit worried. I believe Whoa, Cyril. Oh, that's a great fight for Raynor, though. Pretty Cyril good. is taking an awful engagement against those upgraded Zerglings. They do so well. They take down the Queen and a ton more lings, but the Roaches are knocking on the door. Raynor's gonna look for the surround. Is he gonna find it? The Roach is trying to wriggle into the safety there, and that oh. is a lot of Zergling zombie grub. He's going to start microing the Ravager eggs, but Raynor can counter micro and actually target fire. We don't even need to as the Roaches are going down one by one. Finally, Serral's Lings come forward here, but they are not going to be enough. So many Lings left over for Raynor with that plus one melee. He's making more and just sending them across the map for the counter. This was the better composition out of Raynor, and he's used his Zerglings fantastically. Counter attacked against them, and now pushing back into Serral's base. Serral trying to fight with the weaker Zerglings against the higher upgraded units of Raynor. Raynor's up five workers behind him. A desperation baneliness is on the way for Serral, but after losing the core of those Roaches, things are looking very bleak for the Finnish player. And then there's the next problem, which is the Roach Warren of Raynor. He already invested a plus one missile so darn early, so Serral will be permanently behind there. This might come down to a desperate count, or run by rather from Serral to try and get some damage done, but how do you run by someone who also has these speedy, better upgraded lings? Target firing the Ravager. He's going to go after the third base now. Serral loses that third base. I mean, he was already pretty desperate in the first place, but be extra desperate if that happened. Yeah, this is Raynor. Once he takes control with such a mobile, hard-hitting style, he runs away with the game very quickly. It doesn't matter if you're a three-time WCS champion. You can't stand against these Zerglings. He's going to look for the run by as well. Raynor is so unafraid of those Banelings. He is up 11 workers. He's going to have 1-1 one, one and maybe have even plus one Carapace to ensure that Serral's Banelings don't suddenly turn the tides. Even if they did, Raynor is on to growing that Roach count to a very safe amount. He is keeping tabs on if Serral is trying to macro or all in. At this point, we're seeing everything. I think he knows he's just going to try and all in. Oh, this link counter from Serral does come in, but a little bit afraid of getting cornered on that side of the map. Raynor shifting to the left-hand side. Looks like he wants to trap those Zerglings on his side of the map. A lot of Banelings, though, morphing in as well. Serral gonna oh. look for some big connections. Takes out a lot of Raynor Zerglings. Raynor had no idea those Lings oh, were there. No. Those Banelings are supposed to finish oh, no. He loses all of his Lings, but does his Roach count have what it takes to live? They have the upgrade. Serral has no upgrades here, but he could maybe start the momentum, the snowball effect. If he continues pressing that Z button into them across the map. He was so far behind, but with some magic failing hits, Serral creates a scary moment for Raynor. <laughs> it's not enough no. in the end, but uh, definitely a nice attempt for the comeback there. Raynor, though, plus one melee upgraded Zerglings, his trademark style takes him to the 2 1 advantage. Serral is trying to get some. some edge up, you know, and I don't think it's just that he's trying to get the drone kills of Raynor or the, the, the victory even. I feel like he's also trying to control the game so he can have that scouting uh, for if Raynor's doing something tricky, but it's not working as this young lad is up two to one, but we are going to go to a break. Don't go anywhere, guys, who's Epic ZVZ is going to be coming back very soon.
we are back here with the WCS Grand Finals. And we're all being shocked and surprised by this young man on screen. Raynor has taken a two to one lead over the three time WCS champion, Serral. Isn't that the story though? Scarlet, two one lead, two one lead. Lambo taking the ace match, and then somehow Serral still just proves that he can always be a champion. But we were headed into Dream Catcher for this next game. We are in the top left. And this guy in the top, I already said that, has the blue Zerg. He is NC Sports' Serral. And starting to get a lead in this series. Two more games away from taking the championship. Down here in the bottom right hand side, the 16 year old Italian Stallion, the Red Zerg. He is Raynor. <laughs> Beat it. spaghetti arms. Yeah, speak it. <laughs> I have to forgive my mistake, as that break was there for, for us as well. This is, this is a pretty hype match. As, you know, there's always a little bit of that worry when you go into any, any match, especially a finals zone, especially when you talk about Serral and you're like, well, you know, Raider sounds like he has all these great things going for him, but what if he just gets bucked? And instead, he is now up by one. So a long series to go, and Serral seems to be pretty good at adapting uh, to his opponents. I'm sure he knows that he is the guy to topple and he's gonna have to try and, and mix things up. But, you know, he's tried. He's tried keeping tabs on Rainer. He's tried maybe somewhat playing on his own game and it's not, um, it's not working so far. No, it's definitely a scary style to play against someone like Raynor. Uh, this is a shorter rush distance map, but these plus one melee zerglings, the mutilisk swaps, this is a dangerous mobile style. It's one where there's definitely weak points. If you strike the right moment, you can take down your opponent because zerglings, mutilisks, they're mobility focused units. They're not the best front on fighters. Sterile, unfortunately, not able to bring it together with that timing attack in the last game. It turned out that what Raynor was doing, mass zerglings on a low drone count with melee, very quickly kind of countered that. But here on Dreamcatcher, I think Serral is definitely going to be looking to do something to slow down Raynor's play. I actually was watching a game of Raynor versus Nurture a week or two ago where he was taking down the rocks just to cut off roach attacks right before they hit him. So these rock towers in the middle of the map, something I've got my eye on to see if one player chooses to knock those down in the early stages. Well, Serral was pretty consistent on that versus Lambo, and yet Lambo's all in. As, as long as it took, still worked. Uh, even Sarah was like, I was, I was surprised by that. I thought I had a great defense. Um, but I don't know if Raynor's the, the type of guy, too, if he's going to do something very aggressive, you know, like last game. It wasn't Roach-based. It's not like a hmm. conservative two-based Nidus Worm. It feels like he could do that. I don't get me wrong. It's a, a lot of games that should be played here. But it feels like he is going to find a lot of confidence, feel very comfortable with Lings. And we see him making them right now. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's oh, what I always oh. like to say with these strategies. And indeed, there is going to be a Roach Horn down this time for Raynor. But as we saw, of course, in those earlier games, sometimes he does make it look like a Roach build. Still just goes for a Spire, goes for those Ling upgrades. We'll have to keep our eyes peeled. As right now, Serral scouting around the edges of the map, checking that there's no gold bases or hidden expansions, perhaps. That would be a weird one. Yeah, he, he, oh wow, he really thinks Raynor might be up to some tricky plays. But here we go, this is the only trick coming out of Raynor. A uh, big pack of Zerglings flooding across the map. He just made drones, he has a couple of larvae now, but it's more about the wall. How healthy can it be by the time the Lings make it? He has, uh, you know, basically as much advanced notice as possible. The Lings at the very front goes in and cancels the third base, realizing he's not going to be able to save that. Uh, that's definitely the case, but at least he can hold on to the game if he can hold this wall. Is Raynor going to commit? No, not even going to go for it. Just says, look, the cancel on the third's enough. I'm going to keep these lings alive. They'll threaten later. Into plus one range behind it. The upgrade lead is there for Raynor. But even though he took down the third, remember his own third has just started building. And he has been way down on workers this whole time. So Serral here is mining with more workers for longer. He has a faster lair and he's going into the roach production a little bit faster. So whilst Raynor is securing a faster third, he's not necessarily ahead in this game. Yeah, it's always tricky. Uh, we do have a lair for both parties now. This one a little bit faster for Raynor. 
Um, I mean, if he, he's going to want to... He can dominate the map with the Lings. He can constantly keep tabs on the third base or try and get some sneaky Lings in to get a full scout. Maybe Sarah will be the one to trick him by actually going for a Spire. But if he's going to keep the map, going to assume that he has a, a decent follow-up here as he now does get a little bit ahead on those workers. Would he be the one to break down the ramp? Or the, the rock, mm. sorry. But, I mean, if he was worried, he probably would have already started doing it. I think he thinks his road transition will be fine in case Cyril was being aggressive, but it's actually Cyril. Well, I, I really like it because Raynor has shown in the past, even when he wants to use those rocks defensively, he waits for the last possible moment, mm. even here, because the moment you take down those rocks, you really, uh, you forecast what you're doing. You kind of show your opponent, hey, I uh. want to be defensive and greedy. So hiding that information in the last second, it's dicey if you don't get the rocks <laughs> down to stop their attack, but it also delays giving your opponent that information. So I kind of like it as long as you don't end up getting crushed by the attack. <laughs> or the rocks. That happens so, <laughs> so rarely that I don't think people realize that you can actually be crushed by those. If Very else occasionally, you'll get a few units trapped in there, or if you've got some fungal growth, a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, road speed on the way for both parties. Um, no, no attack to really decide the game as of yet. So this is the first time we really get to see Rainer, unless he like, gets a spy right now, uh, play into, well, where all, all the pros are saying, like, well, you don't want to play into the longer Roach game where you both mm -hmm. get tunneling claws or maybe one person goes for a Hydralist end. But this is usually where Serral is either, um, you know, he wins because it's an even game and he's just very good at it, or even if he's behind and he gets to this point, he somehow manages to make Roaches look like Lings and get back into the game and also just make the smart decisions to drone, make Roaches drone. Uh, currently, he is a little down, he's evening up now, down in that army supply. Yeah, um, he has got a... No yeah, Raynor was mining with a few more workers for a little while there, and his supply count, I mean, that's looking uh, really healthy right now. Yeah, he doesn't start plus two, and only makes his roaches, so... Decisive. Uh, I think he's just going to go for a big attack, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Uh, if he's just... Uh, if he's waffling, if he's thinking, like, oh, is Cyril going to do something, that's just going to end up being a big mistake, as Cyril is getting... Uh, that, that plus two is going to be an important upgrade if it gets close to finishing. But the Raynor should be hitting before that. I don't think Cyril has an idea this is happening. Actually, he might just see it with the Overseer. I he missed has, it. He spotted the gases missing, so he might kind of have an idea, but I don't know if he actually saw the frontal push. There are roaches okay. and ravages on the way, but Cyril's down 20 army supply right now, and these rocks starting to get worked on. Raynor wants to open up this quick reinforce path, and he wants to kill Cyril before the upgrade lead hits. Raynor wants to make it happen right here, right now. He's going to force his way through the choke. The ravages don't really get any shots off, so he does manage to push through, but his defender's advantage is going to be able to take hold of this only now 10, 20 army supply difference. Raynor is pushing though. He does not have plus two on the way. He's very dedicated to this. That is a lot of Ravager Biles that keep forcing Raynor to dodge them. The positioning from Serral is splendid and the reinforcements are close to the Queens pulled into the front line. The Ravagers being pulled back. Raynor unable to achieve the damage he was looking for. And at the end of that, Serral stands strong. He's got a four worker lead and his plus two upgrade kicks in. Serral secures the advantage. I mean, Serral is kind of been the guy to prove that maybe upgrades aren't everything, but it's Raynor. That was definitely not the attack he was looking for. He's hoping that Sarah was going to drone up a little bit more, you know, not realize there's an attack on the way. Think like, okay, we're both going to go up to maybe a little more, uh, you know, max before we really move out. No, uh, Sarah, he realized what was actually going on, made enough, defense advantage kicks in, and now with that upgrade lead, he should be winning the Roach fights unless there is a substantial, you know, poor positioning on his part. Trying to counterattack with a few Roaches on the north, little backstabs are going to be the sort of moves that Raynor needs to use to get in there and tie up this game. He's up two workers right now. He's maintaining a forward position. That's what I like the most. Raynor looking for the odd run by here or there, and he's going to find his first real bit of damage with that. The fourth hatchery going to go down. Ooh. No cancel from Serral. Uncharacteristic mistake. Not today, though, I feel. I feel like I've heard you guys always be like, what? Don't oh, cancel again. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, with the next eye the next, uh, yesterday in that, uh, that series with Neve versus Serral as, uh, versus uh, Raynor as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been uh, a lot of those. We actually see some use of contamination, by the way, as Serral just continues to advance his upgrade lead. It's always uh, Every nice thing single to see. game, that contamination comes down right on cue to stop the plus two. <laughs> it's a really nice thing that he's just worked into his play. Accidentally does take down his own creep tumor. 
does Raynor with those destructible rocks. Continuing though to create threat on the map. Now, the real scary thing here for Raynor is if his roaches get cornered and trapped, but he seems to have found an opening. <laughs> Always he finds a way into the mineral line, but he's got to do the damage quickly. The roaches of Steril will be able to collapse and punish this if he doesn't get the damage done. He just like assumed that there'd be roaches to the left and the right, but not the middle, and he was he was right. But now he's gonna get sandwiched. There's only right for a very, very temporary time. Ten drones, I don't believe is worth that many roaches. Even a bit of a misclick loose losing more as Raynor's trying to micro both sides. He's now lost both sides, but his plus two upgrade's finally gonna kick in. He's still a bit at a disadvantage as a plus one carapace is right on its tail, but Steril now has Tunneling Claws and Burrow done. Yeah, he's bought a lot of time as Raynor, but this is the scary moment. We've, saw, we've seen Steril so many times today get into a weird position, but the moment that Tunneling Claws finishes, he can create a lot of problems for his opponent. Raynor trying to defend, but on the south side, the Tunneling Claw Roach is looking very scary. They realize they outnumber, and they're actually just going to unburrow and start engaging on both sides. Plus two is almost done, but plus one is almost done for Cyril. Even a three second lead there. And Cyril now just actually blows past the fourth base defense into the natural, is having trouble around his third. As he, he knew that there was going to be the burrow eventually, but he didn't have any overseers. Thankfully, some sport crawlers were put down. Looks like Cyril's not going to force the issue through that choke around the third. Raynor doing a lot better at dealing with those roaches than we've seen most players, but Cyril is not letting them get cornered and die just yet. A few of them going down, but a few workers have died and there's still more hiding in the base. Look at the mini-map, chunks of blue roaches moving from all sides. Serral is all over Raynor. Raynor desperately fighting for time, fighting for survival on Dreamcatcher, but the roaches unburrow on the fourth, and that's gonna be a snipe. Yeah, just as it finishes too, no chance at a, at a cancel. Uh, Raynor is, he's hurting. He managed to keep a maxed out army supply though, and might even take this fight. Yeah, he will, um, despite being down an upgrade. Yeah, just more than enough units, but the Tunneling Claws harassment continues. Tunnel Serral always keeps these guys alive, or always has more. Rain is gonna try and take it to Serral's side of the map, but meets the army instead. Oh, that's too many roaches and ravages for Serral. Takes a favorable engage, forces the retreat on the south side. It looks like Raynor will be able to hang on for a moment, but Serral pushing in on all sides. He's forced a lot of roaches to the back lines to defend the Tunneling Claws, and now he just can continues to assault from the north and the south. It's taking chip, like chip damage away every single time, but it's, uh, it's chip damage that Rainer really can't replace. His economy isn't terrible, but he is down nine drones, an entire base. Larva might become an issue, but uh, that scouting on the left side, he just has no overlords over there. Nick's constantly gonna be able to surprise him. Looks like he finally will clean up Serral's presence, but actually only temporarily, as Serral continues to reinforce from his third and fourth. He's also starting plus two Carapace after already being up an upgrade, and I think Serral's feeling quite confident in this game. This is Serral's rhythm, you know, he, he just likes to attack from multiple sides, he likes to take these engagements, and it just feels like even though he does take a few corrosive bile hits, a few roaches get caught that are burrowing into the base, eventually his opponent always takes more bad fights than he does. He always catches them looking somewhere else, lands the corrosive piles, or suddenly finds the roaches without enough support. And that seems to be the case here. These ravages being focused down, Raynor's lines crumbling, Serral in his comfort zone, looking for the huge damage, snipes the third base, backs on out of there, and it goes from a solid lead to a huge one. And that is the game. Rainer realizes there's no point in playing that one out. It's going to be a tied series, though. There's still a lot of games where Rainer, you know, he tried the Roach thing, basically. We finally get to see him for that, right? And, um, and it really didn't look very good. I mean, it didn't look very good, but you know the intention was good. You know that there was a chance that it would have looked amazing and brilliant. But when he did it, it was just, it was, Sarah was so prepared. It's so funny, isn't it? You see this big army supply advantage, you think, you know what? Serral's investing in extra upgrades. He's yeah. investing in a few more drones. Maybe this can work. But then all the queens come down, the roaches form this perfect defensive <laughs> arc, and the roaches are popping out of the eggs just in time to replace the ones dying. And it, it just seems like Serral is impervious to those roach speed plus one assaults. He almost always blocks them in their tracks, but good to see Raynor mixing in a bunch of variety. You can't just do the exact same build order every single game, or Steril will get your number and he will shut you down. Yeah. Of course, when a best of seven occurs, we have no vetoes, and we're going on to Blue Shift 
next. They're going to be seeing all of those new maps. They've been out for like three weeks. And a lot of them, I feel, are... are, are they, they're paranoia-inducing, man. Like, they feel so small. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Ship being the other small one along with... I guess, actually, Fracture is the smallest, right? And then Cerulean. Yeah. yeah. Blue Ship's, in comparison, actually quite good. Quite normal, I suppose you'd say. I mean, yeah, it's that it's that path through the middle where armies seem to materialize out of the tall grass from <laughs> yes. nowhere that can definitely inspire a lot of fear. Speaking of inspiring fear in his opponents, the player who has won three WCS championships this year and wants to make history happen with the fourth one. He's tied up the series two to two. The finished player in the top right, give it up for Cyril. In the bottom left, as the red Zerg, he is Rainer. And if you would like to see him at those Global Championships at BlizzCon, he's going to have to just win this straight up. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's the only way, the only path remaining. This is the last event. Granting those uh, valuable WCS points, of course, to get into the BlizzCon WCS Global Finals. And here on Blue Shift, it seems like both players are going to be opening up with some rather typical openings. The hatchery first, into the gas, into the pool. So far, Sterile has shown a lot of very regular openings, but especially here in this finals, he has started to vary it up a little bit. We've seen Sterile pull out some surprise Zergling floods across the map. He's gone for the Roach Queen pushes. Let's see what they've got in store for each other here. Well, Sterile finally had that game where he just, he, he didn't take much damage. It was a little bit of a surprise. He had to cancel his third, sure. Um, that's not so bad. It's, it's much better than getting the Lings into the natural. Um, and then he was able to play his macro Roach game as you said, like he just seems to be impervious against that specific attack that Raynor did with his own roaches. And is Raynor going to kind of like be like, you know what? I tried it. I was up one. That was kind of the time to. And now I'm going to go back to all the other stuff, all the other lings, hidden lings, hidden spire. He did try, uh, by the way, at the end of that game to go for a hydralist end. So there's some kind of uh, maybe theory about his the idea that the Lurker might be the Hail Mary mm -hmm. to bring him back into the game or the, the real cool trick, but I really liked his Link Spire play, so that's what I personally want to see. I'm with you on that one, Zombie Grub. If we see some Mutas, if we see some upgraded Zerglings, that's the Raynor in his element that we know and love, and it's a, a good time here. Tied up 2-2 two to two to bring that back. Raynor is going to be starting up with six Zerglings poking across this map, and it does seem like both players have pulled off gas a little bit and uh, keeping an eye on that production tab for a fast evolution chamber. But it looks like just a quick third hatchery for both sides. Yeah, Raynor, if he had gone the other way, probably would have even got a cancel, because it's, like, it's such a low hatchery against the Lings, but it has to kind of like, yeah. go around. There's Queens now, there's, there's Lings going to be kind of on top of it, so he's at least going to get the scouts. Maybe does, some chip damage? Does force Daryl into this uh, hatchery position, which isn't as common. It's going to really shorten the rush distance between the two players' third bases, Good though, point. now that they've both expanded on the same side. So, I mean, that favors usually the sort of Roach Queen push a little bit more than the upgraded Zergling play. For now, it is just Zerglings in the production tab for Raynor. He's skipping out on the Baneling Nest. I think he's going to go straight into Roaches behind it. Meanwhile, Sterile playing the much more standard style with the Baneling Nest and a lot of drones in the production tab. And the Baneling Nest is, is key. That's going to really help him out, not just for this Ling Flood, but what is probably going to be more Ling Floods and Ling based play. But will he have the Banelings prepared? He sees the Ling Flood now on the way. He's going to keep a close eye on his overlord to see if there's any more. As Raynor's actually going to droning. No, he's back in the Lings. That's a lot of Zerglings coming across for Raynor. The Banelings weren't ready. Cyril not noticing this push coming out until a little bit too late. That one Baneling in the north, it's going to finish, but it's going to go down immediately. Raynor already gaining some nice momentum here. The drone's being forced into the fight. Not a situation you want. Cyril caught with his pants down. This is a disaster. Master for the Finnish champion. That is his, the, the Baneling's gone. They didn't even get an explosion. Seven drones have gone down. Rainer continues to drone behind this, but Cyril actually already making a ton of lings. is going to continue making more. Probably going to look for some revenge. And as you noted, Rainer does not have a Baneling nest. He was able to get through the, enough roaches in one of these games to hold the counter. But will that time work out here? Is he going to overextend? He's going to keep those lings alive. He is going to keep them alive. Maybe a little bit of scouting in the natural as well. Does manage to snipe down one of those weakened drones. Look at this, just sending individual uh, Zerglings and pairs in to both scout and harass those damaged Zergling lines. Uh, of course, sees the hatchery. No lair on the way. Cyril is stuck on Ling Bane Tech. Not just that, he's on 22 workers right now. <laughs> yes. And he's just holding down the Zergling key. 
I don't think Rainer saw that. There is nothing going over there to take care of that, and that could be devastating to his drone line, but he also needs to worry about just the other amount of lings and banelings. His roaches are not quite ready to go. He has nine on the way, but they will be coming out from every single hatchery, the ideal situation for lings to round. The queens are caught a little off guard as Ooh. well. They cannot protect each other. One is surrounded. The other one's gonna try and target on the banelings, perhaps. These queens, though, one of them does pull back to safety. One does fall, but the roaches are here. And that attack is repelled, but at the same time, the Banelings in the main base, Raynor, a little bit slow to react, and six workers go down. A very nice snipe there to tie up the work account, keeping Serral in this game for now, but things are not looking good. What, what is Serral doing? He's not doing anything. He has minerals, he had, he had larva, he, had, he was supply blocked. Oh, oh, wow. No that was a long, either. long time not to make anything. 600 minerals are in the bank. He's got his Zerglings here now. But that's a lot of roaches building up for Raynor. And there is always the potential for Raynor to push across this map. He's adding a Baneling Nest. That says one thing to me, he's not Zombie Grub. He's gonna go for a big Roach Baneling Assault at some point in the near future. I don't think he's just gonna stay defensive with a mixture of Roaches and Banelings. There we go, more Lings in the production tab for Raynor. He seems to be reading this perfectly. Serral's trying to do a Zergling Baneling all in, but the Baneling Nest for Raynor is about to finish. If you can get a couple of Banelings here, plus the nice snipes of the Roaches, and there are three Banelings. A lot of Banelings are being made for Serral right now, but Raynor actually has his own run by catching the Queen, catching the third, ensuring this is even more of an all-in as there come the Banelings now, but there are a lot of Roaches. Raiders, Banelings, are they going to get the connections? Whoa, these Banelings coming in. The Roaches, though, oh, oh. more than a match for them. There's more Banelings finishing morphing for Raynor. Serral desperate to find an opening, but the Queens in the mineral line standing strong. The Banelings, the Roaches, the Transfuses. Raynor slaps that push down easily, and Serral does not have a follow-up. He's just holding down the circling key. He doesn't have a Roach Warren. He's behind and working. Workers. He's desperate. Rainer takes the lead once again and is one game away from taking victory away from Serral's fourth championship gone and then also that ticket to BlizzCon. That would be quite the story. Disappointing as well for the eighth current seeded player. But that was Lambo. Yes, yes, you know, Lambo definitely. We've seen him actually in the booth whispering in Serral's ear in between the matches. Of course, <laughs> definitely uh, got something riding on this one. It's always a hard position to be in, spectating and uh, having your destiny, of course, decided by another. But this is a very tense moment. And that early game, the Banelings just not morphing in time, engaging with the Zerglings and the Queens out in the open. I think Serral didn't see the Zerglings come across the map. This is an echo of his match versus Jon Snow earlier in the tournament, the second match. I asked him about it afterwards. And I said, what went on? You didn't make any units when you saw the Ling Flood coming. And he said, yeah, I didn't notice it. I, I don't oh, know. Wow. I yes. just didn't look at my mini map at that moment. And, and it, I, it's an uncharacteristic mistake. And he seems to have done it again in that game because his reaction was just a little bit slow. And on a map that short, you've got almost no time to react to begin with. He also, he, there was the, the, the 10 seconds it felt like where he actually wasn't making anything. And that is the difference of the Banelings being prepared for Raynor. Could have been different. We are now going into Cerulean Fall for this next game could be the last one if this guy can take it. I cannot believe this is how it's going to go down, but it is an amazing story. We're now into the game. These guys are putting on quite a show for us, and I, I would have it no other way. In the bottom left, as the blue Zerg, he's down one. It is Cyril. He's been in this position before this tournament and he finds himself there, one loss away again. And on the other side of things, up here in the top right hand side of Cerulean Fall, just one game away from making his dreams happen. One game away from the first big trophy in his career. Everybody give your energy to this man up here. He is Raynor! Cyril's found himself in this spot so often that I cannot believe it ends here. I believe in the ace match, but Rayner, you know, he's had that lead. I mean, the first series, uh, the first game, I guess, did go to Cyril, but since then, it's been Rayner getting the next and next and next game. And, and if that continues, he would be the champion. An absolutely insane run. It's really in fall. I, I saw this as the next map, and I was like, well, I talked about the shortness of one of these maps, and I mentioned that one along with Fracture. 
And this has been such a, a high octane series surround like around these Ling based plays, whether Sarah tries it or Rainer mm -hmm. commits to it. Um, that I, I feel like that's got to go. It's got to go the same way again, right? It's classic Zerg versus Zerg, isn't it, Jess? It's a knife fight in a phone booth. We've called it. We've given it all <laughs> sorts of metaphors to describe the vicious and action packed nature that is this matchup. Sometimes Starcraft takes the form of a long drawn out strategy game. Sometimes it's a much more fast paced and brutal strategy game. And that's what we're seeing here in this Zerg vs. Zerg series. Both players, of course, in this mirror matchup, playing the same race, the fastest paced race that is based usually around backstabs. They're based around kind of finding the weakness in their opponent's armor. And that is why these games are seesawing so suddenly in one direction and then the other. They're just such, they're such explosive games. And it's not because these guys are just like, you know, lol, lings, banelings, go explodey. Like they're, they're <laughs> thinking a lot about the games, of course, and the series and how they're going to be playing it out. But I mean, it feels like they're making all of these decisions in like a split second so much faster than any other eSport because we're the best one. <laughs> I second that one right there. I mean, there is so much pressure on these players. Their ability, of course, to think under pressure and to stay mentally flexible and constantly change their game plan throughout is something which is uh, unmatched, of course, by anyone else who didn't make it to the grand finals of this tournament. They, uh, they've pushed through, they've made it by adjusting to their opponents, changing their styles, changing their strategies, and there is so much give and take here. It seems like now in game number six, both players going to open up with a very typical opening build order. Both not wanting to skip the Baneling Nest, they're droning up, they're getting the fast third base. We're going to have to see where the variation goes in the next few minutes. So many of these games have been just like, well, that was four lings, and oh, oh no, hold on, it's 12 lings, and I was... I was wondering if Rainer was also going to do it. He's, he's getting a decent amount, but also getting those drones. Mm. You know, that's why those overlords outside each other's bases are so important. You need to spot when your opponent floods out with those big surprising groups of Zerglings. And Raynor has been very on top of poking out with queens, often two queens, to push back Serral's vision. He's been spreading creep to his third base very quickly as well. And it's a combination of those factors which has made it harder for Serral to respond to Raynor's aggression and to see these things coming as early as possible. You can see the overlords pushed quite far back for Serral. We have an evolution chamber first versus this rather quick lair. But with no Roachworn Evolution Chamber wall off, like that's that's not what we're actually seeing a lot of that in Cerulean Falls, but Ooh. Yiling, did it see that? Yeah, it saw the lair so, 100% yeah. there. Yeah. Just barely slipped by the two queens at the front, spotting the fast lair. That's gonna make you afraid of two things, Mutalisks and Anitis Worm. Those are the big threats there. And uh, of course, Serral wanting to follow up Scout will continually poke Zerglings around. He's got one, I believe, coming in the third base at the same time and just defending with his Zergling Baneling at the same moment. It's got to be Spire, right? He's been so long to slap down a Roachhorn. Yep. So that, it's, I mean, it's really risky to do that. There's no trickery to this. There's no potential just, you know, oh, they're coming, so I need to make Roaches. You are just, if they had Roaches and Banlings, well, you'd be in a, a lot of trouble. But of course, Serral, you know, did not get that quick of a, of a Roach Warren. He doesn't have a large Ling swell. There's Banlings to Banlings anyways, so the, the chance of it snowballing was not very high. And Rainer is, he's going to get away with it, it seems. Yep. You know, we talked a lot about how do you stop Raynor in this tournament? And the answer has often been having a solid door. This time around, Serral has been okay. very solid with the wall off. It's poking with Ling Bane and a lot of roaches in production. Yeah, I guess I spoke a little too soon. Serral wants to try and go for it. It's not going to get any upgrades anymore. As Rain are going to be able to see this in time and react to it. These, these roaches are going to be kind of slow. So we will have more time than usual to emergency build spine crawlers. But that is the classic way if you're going to try and go for the spire like this. But those drones were so low that instantly six go down. But hey, some counters. Rainer also going for the drones. And, the and also seeing, yeah, the roaches. That's so important, seeing those roaches. He runs into the main and sees even more coming out. And there we go. Spine crawlers going down for Raynor. Raynor knows even if he loses the third base, if he's got Mutalis up, he's in a good position. There's no lair for Serral. There's no big follow-up to this. And just... Roaches on the front. I think that's enough Zerglings to actually surround these. The Queens and Zerglings coming down to engage this. The Ling Bane reinforced isn't there just yet for Serral. He's gone in half cocked and Raynor was prepared for this. He's shutting down the front wave of Roaches, but there's more.
Oh, where that came from. There's a lot more, and there's going to be a Ling float, so he has to be careful not to use all of his Banelings. He only went for one Spine Curler, because for a time, he didn't have enough minerals, but maybe now is the time to actually add some on in case you can just continue buying time, taking okay engagements, and that's exactly what he does. He realizes this could be going on for a little while longer, and two oh, more Spine Curlers going to be huge. Those Banelings, though, that's the killer. Sarah waiting for those. The first two Mutalists are queued up, but they are a long time away from joining the fray. A lot of Banelings on top of this ramp for Raynor. They are the last thing keeping him alive. But the combination of the Roaches and the Banelings is very, very frightening. The Queen positioning, though, fantastic. The Spine Crawler dishing out some damage. The Banelings on both sides exploding. So many of Serral's Banelings going down. But Raynor's defense is starting to fall apart. He sides down the last Baneling. Still has six of his own remaining. He's hanging on right now. The Mutalists are out, Zombie Grub. The Banelings are chasing the Lings. They actually connect with them. There's more coming here for Serral, but he has two Spine Crawlers to take down. He has to get into the drone line as well as the Mutas will eventually clean all of this up. The two extra Spine Crawlers that were made as he realized I was banking a lot of cash end up helping tremendously as Serral is unable to break Raynor. That just washed up against Raynor's defense. It was so close to cracking through and taking out the drones, but it wasn't able to get the crucial damage done. And Raynor cleverly evacuates the drones from the third. He says, if I just defend my two bases, I've got the better tech. I've got the flying units. I have a massive oh. advantage. Wow, Raynor knows exactly how Sarah's going to try and play this through. Sarah wants to use his lings to the best of their ability, but it's not working out as Raynor is not being silly. He's not stopping making banelings. And now he has those mutas that can help clean anything up. Sarah is on his way to trying to macro out of this. And he did manage to keep the worker count even. That lair is a huge issue. His defense against the mutas is Spore Crawler Queen. Yep, Serral now saying, okay, I couldn't finish it, I couldn't do the damage, I've got to fall back on my defense, and that's a very immobile defense, there's not a lot of threat when you're just building queens and spores. raynor has got the map control, he can roam around, he can look for the harassment, the door's open! A couple of Zerglings slide in for the run by, now there are Zerglings hot on their tail, so they won't find the big damage yet, but already scouting how late that lair is, splits two Zerglings off to the side, not going to find the damage just yet, Serral stands strong, but Raynor starting to re-drone the third base, and those Mutalisks are going to control the pace of this game. Oh, this game is certainly not over, but when Mutas aren't stalled out, it's not a perfect macro game until the Mutas, it can be really hard to stop that snowball. The fourth base is going to be a real trick to get. Um, Serral might you know, just try and max out as much as possible on three bases that he's allowed to, but it is going to be very tricky to continue to expand. Seems like for now, his offense against the Mutas is okay, but also the, the Lings, that was a big issue the last time we saw Raynor go for Ling, Bane, Ling, and Muta. It was, yeah, it was the Mutas, but it was a lot about the links. Absolutely. We see the plus one range starting up oh, here okay. for Raynor. Banelings trying to do a bit of a cheeky run by into the third base. They're going to find their way in, but a quick pull from Serral means, ooh, still six worker kills. Not a terrible trade for Raynor, just damaging the economy of Serral. Raynor is one game away from closing this out. If he can finish this series here, it's going to be massive for him, and he's going to go for the Hydralis tech once more. But that's a ton of queens and roaches. Zombie Grub, I think Serral might be going for a big queen roach push once again. Well, then, as soon as you say, he makes a drone, uh, two <laughs> drones and a hydrolyst center, right? Um, but I was, I was going to say, even if he was planning on doing the attack, Raynor is actually not going into Lings. This would not mm. be the emergency. Oh, I hope these Banelings really connect. It would be his own roaches hopefully flooding in fast enough, but now it's not going to be decided anytime soon. I do want to bring up that, that the Serral is he going to automatically assume, like, well, you won one game with Ling Bane, Ling Muta. You know, are you going to do that again? Is he ever going to think about the Roaches or this fast Lurker Den? And it was a split call as well, because we saw plus one melee yeah. in the production tab. It got cancelled, and Raynor is changing it up. He wants to keep several guessing. Look at how many Spore Crawlers he's forced out by committing to a medium number of Mutalisks. Serral is expecting 25, 30, even 40 Mutalisks entering the fray. But guess what? That's just 12. Raynor is given a pot across the image of going for that plus one melee. Mass mutiling Bane style. He's swapping into Roaches. He's got his Lurker Den well underway. He has an economic advantage, the faster fourth base. And Raynor just setting up for a big Roach Lurker macro game. I do believe that's the first time Serral's seen the Roaches. So now he has a better idea of what he's going to be facing. Not that what he was doing is, is bad. He's going for the same composition. But that if he had tried in the game, it might have been Bad. Now he's still going to have trouble getting his own fourth base. He was, you know, lucky enough to get his own lings, even tap Rainers. And we both 
Um, I mean, the economy is just going to be so much better for Rainer. Up 14 workers, the better saturation, more access to gas. Mm. Can Cyril actually bring this back? He's going to try, allow the tunneling claws that have done him so well in this tournament. Ooh, a couple of cheeky banelings get in there. Four worker kills do go down. And that's nice, since he's not committing to the baneling tech, they weren't going to be much used later on. I've got to agree with you, Zombie Grub, without a fourth base, with a slower Lurk attack. And the upgrade's not actually giving an advantage to Serral right now. What do you have to work with? It's just skill. It's purely <laughs> your ability to defend and take amazing engagements. That's all serral has got to work with here. He has to slowly inch his way out to a fourth base, try and use the defensive power of these queens with their mass transfuse, and maybe find a way back into this one. But if Raynor gets those lurkers on top of his base, Serral is going to be in huge trouble. Not only that, Raynor is, is maybe assuming that he can get at least a contain, and then he can go up to potentially a hive here. He's an infestation pit. Now, he did not see the tunneling claws there, but he sees it graphically on the roaches and maybe we'll get some defense actually he did tail it with the overseer oh look is there doing massive damage for Cyril onto the clumped up roaches of rain or both sides taking a lot of splash the lurkers though go the mute is diving on top of the spores they're taking a lot of damage on the right hand side they are picking off one or two queens but that's not really critical damage right now and it seems like the lurkers of Cyril are holding on rain here he wanted to finish this game right now but Cyril patiently defends backstabs at the scene time and he's managed to survive for now. He did notice that with the Overseer, and he did try at least make a couple of spine crawlers to help out. So, mitigating the damage a little bit. He's still up in the workers, and he'll always have that fourth base. Our Serral is still struggling to do so. Maybe that was a little overeager of Rainer to try and end the game. If Serral wasn't so insistent about building at least two spore crawlers on his front line, not just in his bases, then that could have been a good opportunity to try and snipe the Queens and the Lurkers. Did not work out just yet, but Raynor still in the supply lead, still has a pack of Mutalisks, of course, causing trouble. But there are roaches in your base, and when there's roaches in your base, there's always a chance you're going to lose a lot of drones at the drop of a hat. The Zergling's not able to get in the door. Serral has been so prepared for that, with Banelings and a Queen watching for Zergling counterattacks. A nice attack here, snipes a hatchery. <laughs> Once again, no cancel. Uh, Serral, though, I mean, if he can continue holding on, he will eventually get Max, as he's actually starting to bank quite a bit. He has his own infestation pit on the way, which, surprise, he's going to try and reach for that. He does. He did, of course, see it with the uh, tunneling claws roaches. He might just be thinking he doesn't. He knows he, there's so many ways he can continue falling behind that maybe at least he can kind of catch up and, and keep level with the tech a little bit. These roaches going to come in. The transfuses, though, as well as a few defensive roaches, going to hang on for now. Raynor very patient in these games. Even when things, you know, a fight doesn't go quite his way or he's not able to finish the game when he wants to, Raynor is very comfortable in the late game, in the late mid game. You can see him just posturing here, creating threat. And what's that doing? It's denying the fourth base of Serral. Serral is not able to secure more economy. Raynor's economy has just been ahead for so long in this game. He's got his hive slightly ahead as well. And that is where he's building up that bank. He's building up that advantage for the long game. And we know for a fact, I think everyone has seen a couple of Serra games where he is behind, he is contained, he cannot grab a base, that he somehow manages to keep his cool and take some good engagements. He's actually going to go ahead and try and take this one, equal upgrades, but he had a couple more Hydras. Unfortunately, he was going into a concave without his Lurkers to help out. Yeah, that Roach Ravager, the Bile's doing a good job. It gives Raynor a more mobile army which can create threat on the fly, whereas the Lurkers need to set up a little bit. And that is why Raynor is able to exert so much pressure. Does catch a lot of those Roaches on the backside. Cyril makes the best of it by sniping down one Ravager. But uh, always the trade steadily building up for Raynor. The bank steadily building up. And both players now have a hive. Is either player going to make it to Vipers? Uh, maybe. Cyril is going to have to defend here, but he now has the plus one Carapace lead for maybe 20, 30 seconds. He really needs this fourth base. He's starting to run out of minerals in his main and natural. Oh, it's taking big damage from the Biles. Oh. It goes down. Raynor, he takes a lot of losses for it, but he knows it's worth it. He knows he's got the money to work with. Cyril is being bled dry. Every time he seems that he's maybe going to keep his head above water, maybe establish a fourth base. Rainer is there making the right calls to be maybe a little over aggressive, but worth it since his economy is so good. Now, he actually runs in a couple of lurkers. Those are relatively cheap roaches. And he's on to uh, very good units. Now, we got some vipers wow. on the way. We are getting viper to viper. And Cyril is also trying to squeeze in the lurker 
What is it officially called again? I call it speed a, a, claws. Adaptive but talons, but yeah, go. I like digging claws. Uh, <laughs> that's my favorite one, personally. I think that's the Widow Might upgrade name, but we it can is. go with whatever. It's the one which basically gives stim back to the lurkers. It makes them burrow and unburrow at a moment's notice, and they run a lot faster as well. That's uh, it's actually really crucial. I mean, it's it seems like a lot to reach for when Cyril's in this position, but it can really change up how he can both reposition his own lurkers defensively, but then pounce on top of Rainer's sometimes overzealous attempts to, to end the game or catch a fourth. Yeah. Oh, going to catch these roaches on the left-hand side is Raynor. Should be able to go and handle that. Those roaches of Cyril going to have to pull back for what now. Cyril has made it to max out, but hey, finally finds a little bit of purchase on the map. The roaches coming in in here for Steril. He's been poking and prodding and getting defended all game long, but nine worker kills and slides a few roaches on into the main. But good defense by Raynor, gonna shut down all but one of those. Yeah, he's not even gonna really remake them. He's just maxing out on army again, so they're even army suppliers. Before it was a little bit, um, a little bit different, but he's gonna find a fifth base, and that is, <laughs> unfortunately, no cancel there. And Serena's a little out of position, so it seems like a, it's gonna be a 300 mineral pick up there. We're about to get to the stage where there's gonna be some very complicated engagements on the screen with lurkers and vipers on both sides. The important things to look for is where the lurkers are burrowed, where their spines are firing from, and if the bl green blinding clouds land on those lurkers, he's gonna dive in here. He's looking for an angle. A duck's pulling a few lurkers forward. One blinding cloud goes down. A huge Huge surround for Raynor coming in from all angles. A Viper gets pulled in as well. The mass of Ravages doing so much damage for Raynor, but the Lurkers holding strong for Serral. The Lurkers really did hold strong. I think Raynor maybe did not see a couple of those Lurkers on the backside or thought he could reach them with the Corrosive Biles. But while Corrosive Biles are really quite good, those Ravagers, they step forward once against four Lurkers. Instantly, 10 of them die. So Serral does once again hold Raynor thought he had a killer move with the Vipers, and he definitely can. As soon as Cyril's out of position for one second, the Vipers could just, they could end the game, truly. But with Cyril with a similar composition, the same could be said for him to start the comeback in this game. In fact, I already think he started it with that defense. Yeah, that Adaptive Talons upgrade is so fearsome and still not having Lurkers of his own. Raynor is not going to be able to create these really strong fortified positions like Cyril can. Of course, if those Lurkers get caught too clumped up, they can be blind and clouded. But with the Talons and Cyril's micro, he's so quick to reposition them whenever they're caught out. Uh, more Vipers here from Cyril, and they're, still, they're full energy as they move across the map. This is like the first time in a very long time that Cyril's been able to move his army across the map and actually have a threatening army too, so that Raynor really has to think about how he's going to engage here. Oh, and actually Raynor trying to dive past, once again looking for the positioning advantage, but doesn't want to dive down that choke point, ends up veering to the right-hand side. Raynor did lose his fifth base, and right now they're both maxed. Very similar work accounts, very similar banks and upgrades. He's looking for an angle, but once again, the Lurker spread is too good for Serral. He is missing Overseers, um, and he realizes that as well, so he starts a few. You, uh, maybe you know where the Lurkers are kind of coming from, but to have the confirmation to be able to abduct them out of the ground, you do need those Overseers for that. Now, Rainer is going to continue his upgrade lead with the Carapace, uh, but with Lurkers, sometimes, I mean, more often than not, it is more about the positioning and if the Vipers mm. get the good hits. You know, it's funny, I was speaking to a few players about what they think of Serral's late game ZBZ, and uh, the unanimous thing seemed to be that he just is more patient than his opponents. He can just weather the storm, and eventually someone's going to take a bad fight. He will not throw the game with one bad engagement. He's going to keep pulling at you with these roach counterattacks. He's going to keep finding his way in and trying to get you to, make, to become over-eager to force your way in. If you take one bad fight in this late game, Serral will shut it out very decisively. You can see he sets up to cover all the attack angles. He's slowly expanding, and he only commits small amounts of cheap units to the counterattack. So he's very methodical and careful in how he sets this up. You know, the last time Raynor lost a lot of drones, I was okay with him not rebuilding them, but going down now to 39 and just maybe have it, maybe it's a decision going into nothing but army. He'll have a bigger one, but can he find the proper position to take advantage of it? Or is he going to start losing out on that bank that sometimes that remax is actually how they continue momentum and actually win the game? It's a little worrying, but it all comes down to how good the engagement can go, and Raynor is still the one really Ooh. forcing the issue. That's not going to work. Lurkers, the natural predator of roaches in big balls. Fear 
Of course, in the Roach's heart as they see that, they have to back away. There's Vipers here, but there's even more on Sterile side than Raynor's. And he's just going to pull those Ravages in, takes the free kills and backs off. Sterile is in efficiency mode now. He says, I've been here before, I'll be here again. There's no way for one of us to just easily win the game suddenly. I know I've just got to look for these little advantages over time. And he's starting to pick away at Raynor. I don't know when's the last time I saw a Supreme late game ZVZ, but I remember some sometimes seeing lurkers surrounded by spore crawlers saying, I dare you to come in with your vipers. I'll abduct yours, you'll abduct mine, but I have the spore crawlers. You can't cross this line. It'd be the first time certainly seeing it on the new maps. But if Rainer, if he chills out a little bit, because he's always been the more aggressive one, maybe he gets his own lurkers, we could see that type of game. It's not happening anytime soon as Rainer still sees value in being the one posturing and trying to find and break the lurker lines. Well, he's looking for a mistake, isn't he? He's just yeah. fishing right now. He's looking for a hole in the defenses and he's not finding it. Sterile has got every angle covered. And now that the Vipers are there, you don't need your whole army together because Blinding Cloud stops Raynor from pushing through at an angle where only half of your army is defending. So you can defend with a much smaller force than your opponent is attacking with. And that is why Abducts are becoming more and more important. Both players grabbing the valuable units into their army and trying to snipe them down. It's also why, again, a, you know, a little concern that Raynor's bank really shouldn't be growing as, as fast as Sterile, but so far, Keeping even, um, this is this is going to come down to that spell casting. Rainer now has his own burrow. It's going to help, you know, burrow drones or queens in the counter attack, but also, well, surprise your opponent who doing this. <laughs> the lurkers thought they found an undefended base, but those roaches were quick to it, and that's why we call it stim pack for lurkers, boys and girls. You saw how fast that lurker was running. The roaches barely managed to keep up with it, managed to shut that down. And uh, over here on the right-hand side, Roaches shutting down those tunneling claw roaches. Hydras and Ravages in the middle, posturing. It looks like Sterile wants to take some more abducts. And of course, the highest value targets to the enemy Vipers. They're 200 gas a pop. If you can abduct them into your Hydras, that is a huge win. Oh, Rainer is he's starting to find some success. Now that Cyril is trying to even further his base counts. He's got Burrow to, to deny it, to scout it. And it's going to be harder for Cyril to take those extra uh, good just engagements with the Lurkers as he's further and further spread out. But as it is, he's keeping tabs on Rainer's army, still trying his own harassment, going to continue mm. taking that drone count down that Rainer's is not bothering to replace. That is a bit scary. I'm with you on that one, Zombie Grub. I'd love to see a few more drones in that production tab for Raynor. As we said, Sterile is in efficiency mode. He's all about picking away at Raynor. He's got the Lurkers, so he's not going to get overwhelmed. And if he can just win these Viper trades, that's what it's all about. But oh, he actually takes a bit of a sloppy start to the engage. And Whoa. a nice flank on the right-hand side from Raynor, actually catching a lot of these exposed Hydras. Blinding clouds don't matter when you don't have the Lurker support. So he has to pull back to those two Lurkers on the high ground. They save the day. But a nice trade there for Raynor. Good very, ambush. Very nice ambush. That does give him a substantial lead in that bank as Serral quickly remaxes. He's really been cut down in that lurker count, and it was a little bold of him to move out without the lurkers, thinking that he had found only a portion of Rainer's army. But we know Rainer, it seems like not only is he good at run bys, he's good at tricking our observers, so they have to zoom out that extra, extra step, and they go, <laughs> oh, wait a second. And those roaches are going to push back on the left-hand side. So many overseers on either side at this point. And we do see, of course, both players starting to expand across the map, continuing to poke and prod, but neither player able to take a direct engagement into the splash damage of the Lurkers. The Blinding Cloud, of course, shutting down ranged units' ability to attack in those large battles. And that is why both players can't just stand and fight. Uh, I believe that was a Viper for a Viper. It's so funny, Ali. It starts to get a little silly, you know? They both have enough Hydras to, to one-shot them, basically. But they are still, as you said, the high-profile yep. targets. Uh, Rainer is using his Roach count to a pretty good efficiency as he's continuing to deny the bases while taking another one of his own. His bank is now really quite extreme. Despite being on a lower worker count, Cyril has, uh, has taken another bad trade at the uh, just a minute ago. But that might have been the one mistake. Actually, well, this would be a huge mistake. The Lurker is caught very off guard. Going to be abducted. Could have been worse. It could have been blinded cloud as they were all in a clump. But Cyril's Lurker count continues to drop. Yeah, the Viper's looking for the revenge, though, but not going to be able to find it. There is a concave of Roaches, Hydras, and Ravages. Cyril there, he's looking for some more juicy abducts. He wants to grab some Ravages, some Hydras, some Vipers in to his army, and then withdraw back to the safety of his Lurkers. Oh, yeah, he brought the Lurkers this time. Rainer is going to have that really good concave, though, and it's only four Lurkers. 
Is that enough? It does seem to be as their army counts are very similar. Their upgrade similar as well. Rainer never got spine crawlers. Whenever replaces spine crawlers over to the right side, so he needs to be pulled apart. And there goes his economy once again. He has so much bank, though, that it really would be the issue of the larva, which Cyril has 73 larva, by the way. That is insane. Oh, He's just creating a problem with this army in the middle while his roaches do damage to the expansions. He's coming through now, pressing forward with the lack of those lurkers to add defensive power to this army is huge. The changelings even being frustrating, walking into the midst of Raynor's army and annoying him. A hatchery snipe on the right-hand side for Cyril. Cyril's still way behind in the bank, but the gas, the more important resource is still relatively even and those lurk is still a big threat here for Raynor. Actually he's gonna start making spine crawlers and he's gonna be able to tag this one. The lurkers with that speedy burrow they're not gonna be sniped trying to defend but they're a little too late regardless. Worthwhile trades that was just roaches. Spine crawler's not quite done and that oh. worker count is really getting quite sad. Yeah you've got to invest some of that bank in rebuilding the worker count here as rain or a ravager was staging that base across the cap it gets abducted to its death. Both players just trying to find that efficiency and it's so close. Neither player making a big enough a mistake to really take advantage of. Neither player able to run away with this game just yet. Serena just does not care about his drones or have, letting his drones have friends anyways. And a 27, so with a huge bang, it's not a worry. But um, the way this game has gone really is Serral has brought the game back from those first like 14 minutes and then has been taking the more efficient trades barring one or two along this 28 minute game almost. And still both sides posturing, but finally Serral says enough's enough. Let's split up the lurkers and go for an attack. Five lurkers and a pack of hydras on the left-hand side. Gonna isolate Serral's Ooh. only mining base. He actually corrosive biles himself. Raynor distracted on the right-hand side. Needs to land those blinding clouds to take this fight. That was a little weird. Guess he was focusing elsewhere. As now Ooh. the entire base on the left side. Vipers are taken out by the hydras. The rest of them try and get some revenge by grabbing them, but Raynor does clean both sides up. And that was a good Viper snipe there from Raynor. It looked like things were going Serral's way, but two or three of his Vipers flying into their death definitely uh, dumped a lot of his gas into that. And that's what we keep talking about, the gas bank. Down there in the bottom, 1,300 for Raynor, only 1,000 for Serral. It still could go either way. A big angle coming in here for Serral. He's got the flank on the right-hand side. Raynor recognizes it and just pulls back. Good choice by Raynor. This game seems like it's not going to be won anytime soon. Every time that Rainer almost finds him out of position, Serral's has a good enough concave at the very least. But at this point, his lurker count actually still have five. He's replaced some, um, but it's uh, you know, potentially not all together. As you see, three of them over on the right side. And one on good nice, set of the nice. ducks. Two or three vipers go down, but at the same time, Serral punishes that by taking down the last mining hatchery on the right hand side for Raynor. Raynor's income down in the dumps, but he's looking for revenge on this army. Who's really gonna get the sandwich here? I, I, yeah, no one, no one's gonna go for the sandwich. Raynor pulls the back army around and Serral's still gonna try and let his right side army survive it going under. That was scary oh, for both parties. Them. This is so annoying. Look at them just getting in the middle of that <laughs> army and obstructing it. Serral being very annoying to play against here. And the lurkers, there's still one on the back, but the blinding clouds are huge. He is, should not go in his own blinding clouds though as the top, the army from the backside comes forward. But Raynor actually pushes past those blinding clouds wow. into Serral's army. Raynor, so ballsy, taking a fight on both sides, and yet there's not many lurkers here. He seems to have found the weak point in Serral's armor. He's done some great damage here. I think he may have broken through. Serral still has mining bases. He's trying to rebuild that force, but right now he does not have a lot of lurkers on the map, and this Roach Ravager Hydra Viper force is still very scary. They're both going to deplete their bank right now, but Serral loses a hatchery with some very expensive units, and Raynor, I mean, he also he He's lost the hatchery. You know, they're both low on those mineral patches, but finds two more lurkers and may be able to get out. No, he's going to decide oh, to go ahead and engage. Oh, blinding cloud is huge there. It goes down so much quicker for Raynor. He's one game away from finishing this, but Serral says no. Flags in from the right-hand side. The lurker does get blinding clouded, but the Hydra flank is enough. Serral weathers the storm, comes back after being on the back foot for 20 minutes straight in this game. And now Serral with a 40 supply lead, has managed to hang on to a mining base. He's got double the work account. He has survived. All of a sudden, Rainer, he thought he had the momentum. He thought maybe the Remax wouldn't be fast enough 
or large enough and then suddenly a second army appears from behind sandwiches him in and that is a lot of expensive units that he cannot replace this game is not really about replacing a lot of units for Rainer as he's down so much in those workers he's it's really these this army we see now but Cyril he's going to continue hitting the worker lines he's going to continue taking those better engagements and it seems like Cyril has truly brought this game back we could see on Cyril's face there in the camera he's still just so focused not once in this game as he broke focus he's just so focused on getting to that seventh map on winning this championship he's not going to give it up easily and Raynor he's still doing what he can with a few units Vipers of course can make just about anything happen if you use them correctly a couple of abducts trading there but the force is just so much larger for Cyril yeah a 30 army supply those Vipers would have to do magic and blinding cloud does count as magic here but unfortunately, Cyril is going to keep dodging away. The Vipers can only do so much, especially since Sar Raynor never really went for his own Lurkers. If he had like six Lurkers right now, maybe he starts talking about defender's advantage, but then Cyril has, you know, he's had the hatcheries, hatcheries, he has the workers, and it would just be a waiting game for him. I can't believe Cyril hung on for so long in this game. It's been incredible to watch here, but now it's time for him to finally push across the map. Cyril has just hung on after so many assaults. Raynor with such a ballsy playstyle, swinging in from all sides. The patience and strong defense is the victor. We're going to a map seven, people. Sterile hangs on. What did I tell you? It's like Sterile was pretty far behind <laughs> in the first quarter, third day. Such a long game. I don't want to say the first eight minutes because it's longer than that. But he played to the best of his ability, you said it was all about skill in the position he was in. I didn't get to say it, but I was like, well, he has a lot of skill, so that's good. But before we get into the ace match of this best of seven, we're gonna go to a break. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. I cannot believe we're here. Rainer has to win this game to make it to BlizzCon. Cyril has to win this game to continue his reign of domination and take all four of those trophies for WCS. Who is it going to be? They're both Zerg. We're, giving, we're getting an amazing ZVZ Finals, of which I know many of you are like, hold on here, ZVZ, I don't know. <laughs> and then it gives us these games of such top quality. It's crazy to see the build up here. 
There was a lot of action in the early games, and it kind of built up there to that one, which just went for a 30-minute slugfest. Lurkers, Vipers, Roaches, you name it, both players just taking swings at each other. And in the end, the Lurker play, the patience of Serral, did end up winning out, just dragging it out, and the efficiency, of course, reigning supreme there in that late game. You know, I wish Roddy was here just because I'm trying to remember a game where I think Serral was in that exact same position. Of course, not the same map. It was months ago, and maybe even more, where it was like, you know, he, has no, he doesn't have better upgrades, he doesn't have a better economy. The only thing he has is Lurkers and a Dream. And even before he had the Lurker speed, and before he had the Vipers, he made them look like, I mean, really overpowered units, honestly. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's a lot of things you put in the hands of Serral, and he just makes these incredible comebacks. I think I remember that game, actually. There was a match against, I think, Lambo on 16-bit, where he made a really incredible comeback. <laughs> but Serral's done it so many times uh, against players of all races in these tense moments, and he's done it many times throughout this tournament as well. Being down on the edge of defeat, he's often brought it back. And, uh, I mean, we're tied up. We're in the seventh game. It's Zerg versus Zerg. And not just that, I'm a little bit excited because Game 7 is going to be on Parasite, one of the new maps you haven't seen too much of this weekend. Yeah, I was I was coming into the entire tournament thinking, like, is Parasite really that fun of a, of a map? You know, maybe <laughs> Terrans aren't having a great time. And then and then Terrans actually were the ones choosing it. Kind of got to have to reevaluate a little while. And then in this series, we have some of the, the newer esports watchers, like, you don't have a choice. If it goes to an ace match, you'd be playing on the worst map in the map pool. If they threw in, oh, yeah. you know, Dash on Station again, well, okay, <laughs> well, suddenly uh, that's what it's going to be, right? So I don't know if either one of these players particularly likes <laughs> Parasite, leaving it for the last, but I mean, they're the same race, right? So they're going to have to work with the same tools. Yeah, you know, this is one of the biggest maps in the pool, and uh, Zerg players have definitely enjoyed it against Terran, against Protoss. They've had mixed feelings on it. Speaking of the pros, they've said they're about 50-50. Huh? But uh, we're, I mean, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. It's such a huge map. I, I think we might see another 30-minute slugfest. Of course, everyone is just being glued to their screens for this series because we're just waiting to see what these players can bring out. Neither one giving it up easily. Any fears of a quick 4-0 have been allayed, have been put to bed. This one's gone the distance. Uh, it's given us such great games. I mean, they've been, you know, one and then one and then one and one, sure, but every single game has been interesting, explosive. And what do we have in Sawyer's ace matches? It looks like maybe Rainer taking a little bit of the Harsome approach and is jamming. Oh, yeah. You're going to get in your groove. Uh, you know, a lot of players do play listening to music, and especially here, it's game seven. It's a big map. I think it's time for Rainer to go back to his trademark style. It's a great map for upgraded Zerglings. It's a great map for Mutalist. Let's see if he does it. We are going to be finalizing WCS Montreal in this next map. We're going to be going into game number seven. Oh boy, it all comes down to this. Game number seven on Parasite. Uh, top left as the blue Zerg. He is Cyril. Even our cameraman is so excited to watch this finals. We are getting to the end moments. And over here, the 16-year-old with big dreams. Let's see if he's got the follow-through. Give him your energy, Montreal. He is Raynor. I love this crowd. I love now, you guys. It's a pleasure to be here <laughs> sharing StarCraft with so many fans out there that love this game as much as we do. And to witness these two, you know, players, one, young, fresh to the, the pro scene, being able to compete in WCS for his first year. One who's been building up to become the best player potentially in the entire world this year. He hasn't been stopped just yet, and he's finding himself in a Game 7. This is awesome. I am so excited to be here casting this with you, Jess. Yeah, no, I couldn't think of anyone else I'd rather be casting with for a ZDZ Finals, but just in general, Pig, you're so good. <laughs> you're so good. I mean, we can all just uh, soak up the ore of these these two fine young gentlemen on stage. <laughs> it's a hatch gas pool, nothing cheesy, nothing crazy aggressive coming out for both players. And that's what I like to see. I don't want this one to end in the first three or four minutes. I was just thinking that, you know, in a, in a full seven game series EVZ, the action and the difference of builds was not because one person did a 12 pool gas and another person did a, mm. a 12 pool, you know, it wasn't that. It was no early pools, no, I mean, entertaining, yes, but drone pools, right, from uh, Scarlet. No, it was. It was tricky, but it wasn't about ending it before the five minute mark. Is it gonna change? I mean, there's always a chance really they just like they go for this, but then they actually just make a ton of other things, but it's such a large map and 
I don't know if they're going to try and do that. I really do feel that Rainer will try and go for the Muta style again. He has so many ways to, to trick Serral up with it. We saw it. It, it basically worked in that last game. Yeah. It was just Serral being Serral and surviving for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> Establish a lead and then have Serral slowly over 20 minutes grind that <laughs> lead down to dust. That's what we witnessed on Cerulean Falls. But, uh, you know, the first few games were a different story. Raynor, of course, was leading this series earlier on 2-1 to one, and then 3-2. to two. And uh, he is one game away from winning. So is Serral. Both players going to be taking that corner. Kind of triangular expansion. Baneling Nest for both sides. No one wants to die to a random group of Zerglings running across this map. That would be, well, I don't want to say it'd be a silly way, but they'd probably think it was silly. And now they are going to play it safe. Uh, someone should make, you know, more lanes now they're temporarily, but... With this type of open arrow, it had to be really tricky to get the full surprise, like the full cancel, for instance, on a hatchery. Rainer is the first one to do so, as it seems to be common. And he adds a few more. Got these cheeky lings there hiding up in the north. There we go. Yeah, there it is. Ooh, 18 lings on the way here for Raynor. Gonna morph at least two banelings with this pressure. Meanwhile, Serral with more drones in the production tab. Gonna be looking to defend that worker lead, build up a bit of an income advantage. Of course, Drone starting up behind this for Raynor. He's not going all in, but it's a heavy pressure to start things off. Serral already scouting it before it even leaves the base. Typical Serral. He's got eyes in the back of his head. He's got Zerglings all over the map. And he's going to be trying to make these Banelings to defend this third base. But those two Banelings, they're going to try and sneak in the right-hand side while Raynor distracts on the front. Very tricky. Raynor needs to be so careful not to get just one hit. The Banelings do roll in, but sniped on the first one. So all they'll deal will damage the drones. But if any Lings get into the natural, those four or five, six drones will go down instantly. And that's exactly what Serral knows. So he blocks the wall. Tries to get us around, doesn't quite find it. Rainer is going to have to well, live with the fact that it didn't quite work, but it wasn't a wash. He manages to get a six worker lead behind this. How do you stop a momentum based player? You take the swing out. You take the force out of their swing, and that's exactly what that wall off is something Cyril's been doing every game in the second half of this series. He is so good at keeping units there. Always extra banelings, always extra queens. And Raynor, his secret to success, has always been Zergling swinging it on the counter attack, on the backstab. But they haven't been able to find as much damage here in the finals against Cyril. Oh, I feel like it's not quite deja vu, but we have a fast lair. Oh, we have an evolution chamber, and oh, the lings are going to scout it. Actually, pretty quickly against Serral's Roach Warren, more typical Roach Warren plus one missile. But Rainer does add the Roach Warren. He is being sneaky. He's getting the plus one melee. I like it. This is the style that Raynor's known for. There's so much space on this map. A Queen Roach Push, a uh, Roach Hydra Push. None of these are that scary. They take a long time to get over there. You've got a lot of time to backstab with Zerglings. Your muters are going to be able to harass. And here we see the Lings already looking for a little bit of momentum trying to poke around, trying to scout, and more Banelings just looking to find an opening. And Lings get in for the scout for Raynor. Sarah's gonna try once again, really keeping tabs on what that lair means. There's unfortunately no way to scout until it's finalized, if that is plus one melee or plus one missile with the Roach Warren. It's very, very confusing, but nice. Nice eyes there from Sarah. He knows, he knows to watch that mini map. Very good response there by Sarah. Blocks it. And both players tied neck and neck in the work account. It's Roach Tech. And the typical Overlord speed for Serral. And finally, he gets that scouting he's looking for. This time around, it's not a Spire that's finishing. He spotted it before it's even halfway done. Serral has a heads up on this. He knows that this is on the way, and he's going to have plenty of time to prepare. Yes, that is very true. As you were saying, like that Roach push doesn't seem really that, you know, it's going to be powerful here. So Serral is instead going to, oh, okay, well, Ooh. you don't have to push across the map. You make this Knight is Worm. He did start extra queens when he saw it, but it was a question of like, well, is it just defensive macro or not? But even if it was, Rain is trying to change up the way of the game. Now he really needs to scout that it's a Knight is Worm, but that's exactly what Serral is going to try and stop. I don't see an Overseer coming in here. It's just going to be him reading the front lines. Mm, these Lings not able to find the damage just yet. Serral knows that on such a large map, playing defensive against someone who's playing this upgraded Zergling Muta style, it can be a death sentence. It's so hard to get over there unless you can pop out a tunnel inside your opponent's base. And that is exactly what he's going for. Fact, the Nashville's actually wide open right now, but he's not sending any lings in. So he has no advance notice of this. If you have advance notice, you can actually make a, a 
a few Bane Langs and try and find the Nidus Room and just simply can't like kill it before but he has it can no anything idea. out. He but he has no, no idea. Exactly. There's no spines. He's just been droning. Reynolds taking a fourth base. That's the last thing you want. That scream announces the Nidus Worm. And Raynor is in panic mode. He knows he's in trouble. That's a lot of roaches in Queens launching an assault towards his natural. Now that, I mean, exactly. He heard the scream, so he knows it's coming from somewhere. Finally, he finds it. He sees all the queens that he originally probably thought were defensive. Now on the offense, we also have sport crawlers being made to cover. It's going to be a bit of a slower push, but Cyril is looking to end the game here. Yeah, those Spore Crawlers plus Queen's gonna be impenetrable for Mutalist to take on. I think Raynor is forced to counterattack. I don't know if he can break this scenario. He's stuck on Mutas and Zerglings. Serral here with a perfect strategic counter to, to Raynor's play. Raynor trying to get the Nidus Worm. I don't know if he's gonna be able to do it. That is a ton of Queen's. He was starting to build Spine Crawlers and they're in the back of his natural base. That will be a substantial help. And it looks like Serral, wait, is he retreating? Is that going to push this? Uh, he's worried about... He's worried. Uh, yeah, I think that might have been a misclick. He is, of course, worried yeah. about those Lings counterattacking as well. He knows the Lings after sniping the Reunitis Worm are pushing to his side of the map. And he's got a few Banelings and a Queen ready, but some of his drones are going to go down on the third. And he's got a lot more meters on the way, um, but he, he might just be able to hold this. He's got those Spine Colors out helping out. The Banelings being very conservative. Probably maybe looking to more help out against the Queens if possible. Let the... Uh, the spines take care of the armored units, the roaches. Oh. Are a couple of sport crawlers, however. The transfuses are huge, those zombie grubs. So many roaches taking up so many banelings and even more spilling out. The counter attack has done some damage, but the queen standing strong. Those spores counteracting those mutalisks so, so well. Serral here, he's only got a few roaches and queens left, but this is still a huge problem for Raynor. He hasn't actually really broken Raynor yet, though. There's two spine crawlers here, and there's more spine crawlers over the third base. Raynor is able to save his fourth as well. So he's going to have hatcheries, no problem. But will he have the drones? Will he have the army? Sport crawlers still exist. Queens still exist. He does have the plus Ooh, one fire attack with a lot of mutas to go down. The spores are doing so much damage. Those transfuses oh. over time dealing so much. And the supply count is just there for several more queens, more roaches spilling out. I think he's done it, Jess. I think he's broken through here in game number seven. There's just a few mutas and zerglings left. There is isn't much. Cyril wants his seventh, his seventh game, his fourth championship of the year. He manages to take it down and Raynor taps down. Cyril is your WCS Montreal champion. All four championships go to this man right here. Raynor played his heart out, but Cyril was learning how to adapt, learning how he was going to play, figuring out a good enough counter to make it look somewhat easy, but man, Rainer had so much heart there. I almost believe that Serral is just, he continues to be too good. Every time he thinks he's gonna lose, he's like, you know what, instead I'm gonna win. Oh, this guy, he lifts the trophy once again. A familiar sight, familiar feeling. Oh, that's unheard of. Beautiful play throughout. And he does get to hold it for the fourth time this year. It is a historic moment. He did it before with three wins, but this is the first time anyone has won every single circuit tournament for a year. The undisputed 2018 World Championship Series champion. He is Serral. Huh. What a moment. What does he have to say about this, though? We're going to go onto the stage with Sue to get the champion's thoughts. Standing ovation for Serral and so well deserved. Serral. When I talked to you at Austin and I asked you if you thought you could do the three-peat, you said it was highly unlikely. When I talked to you at Valencia after you did complete the three-peat and asked you if you could do the four-peat, you said it was highly unlikely, but it turns out highly unlikely means yes, of course, because you have done it. You're a four-time WCS champion. Thanks. I, I, I know what to say. I wasn't really expecting this, but yeah. And this final was by far the best ZVZ final I have ever seen. It was so close. Talk to us about Cerulean Fall because that game was so back and forth. It could have gone either way and Raynor was just one map away from becoming a champion himself. Yeah, Cerulean Fall, I, I recognized pretty early he was going Mutas, so I didn't want to play against it and I just wanted to finish it, but he had a good defense, I think. I was a bit, maybe a bit sloppy occasionally with my bailing control and I went in a bit too late. But yeah, after that the game went a bit crazy and 
I know how much to pull it out in the end, but somehow I did it. And with this win, I just want to quickly go over 2018 for you, but because it is actually insane. It started with Leipzig, then Austin, then Valencia, then GSL versus the world. And now this is Montreal, another championship title under your belt. There's just one title that I think is missing from your shelf. And that is the WCS Global Finals BlizzCon. Do you think you can take that one too? I mean, technically, it's very similar to GSC versus the bird, so why not? There we go. That's an answer I like to hear. One last question for you. This audience here in Montreal has been absolutely amazing. Thank you guys so much. What do you have to say to them? Yeah, the audience has been great. This is one of the loudest ones I have been in front of. And yeah, thanks to all the fans for supporting me and for non-fans as well. And last but not least, Errol, you and I have done this many times now, so you know what's coming up. Marco Beretz, please come out. We have a tradition that we like to complete. I hope you guys can help us cheer Cyril on as he brings this champagne bottle all over the stage. Mark, I'm pretty sure he knows how to do it by now. This is the fourth time this year, but why don't we help him out? On the count of three, let's chant his name. One, two, three. And there you have it. Your WCS Montreal champion is Cyril. A phenomenal finish to the WCS circuit for 2018. Give her another cheer for Cyril. Phenomenal finish, you say, Nate? <laughs> <laughs> He's finished. It's a joke. Oh, I, I knew that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An amazing set of games. Uh, that game six. All of us in the back were yep. going insane in control. One of the absolute best moments of StarCraft, certainly this year, but maybe in StarCraft II history. It's just such an amazing thing to have come up. Earlier this year, Raynor was not old enough to compete in WCS, and then he goes from that to challenging Cyril for the throne at the cusp of BlizzCon. And these great moments are only made possible by that amazing effort from a player like Rainer and the storyline that got there. So I know that Cyril's the champion and we're going to talk a lot about him, but a huge tip of the hat to the young man who did it all with smiles and class and amazing skill. And put up the best fight anybody has against Cyril this year, Kev. Pushing to the limit is an understatement. We thought Scarlet was very close in game four in Valencia. We thought Scarlet was close today as he was, but at one point we were all, I mean, once he defended on Cerulean yeah. Falls, like, that's it, I really think he has it. And the game goes on and the game goes on and Raynor played great. And I really felt like even with the links as well, an asset plant in the early stages of this best of seven, there were times where Raynor looked like he was outplaying Cero. He was a little bit quicker. He got a couple snipes on drones. Raynor was playing fantastic. But Cero bringing back that game six, Nate, yeah. I've seen a lot of things in the last eight years, but I really didn't believe it anymore. I was this emotional roller coaster where I'm like really happy for Raynor, really sad for Lambo, sad that the streak has ended because that's my stability that I hang on to. And then he brings it back and we're all just there. What a final, man. It's so good. Absolutely insane. We have the final standings updated for you guys here in the StarCraft II World Championship Series circuit. <laughs> Come Your on. four time back to back to back to back WCS champion, Cyril, number one. Nate, he has won seven out of the eight things where you could have earned WCS points. The only one that he didn't win was Leipzig Challenger early January, where the finals was played at 3 a.m. That's the only thing he didn't win when it came to these WCS points. And I love that Smix asked him, she said there's one more tournament to go as far as WCS is concerned. How do you like it? And we got the most Serral response humanly possible. He says, well, technically, I guess it's like GSL versus the world, so I can probably do it. And it's like, yeah, I guess technically he's right. And I can't wait. It's going to be amazing. What a year. I mean, hell of a weekend, gentlemen. Oh, this was such a good weekend. We had so many good games. We had a lot of upsets, I think, in the group phases already. Yeah. But even in the bracket as well, we had trios we didn't see coming. And then we had this fight. I mean, I'm so proud of Rainer. I'm, I'm incredibly impressed by his performance. And it's heartbreaking, of course. He was, I mean, a couple units away from perhaps making it to BlizzCon. 
but he's still so young and his time will come. Uh, what a weekend. I think a lot of people are very excited to see where a player like Rainer goes in the future. But fret not, there is still more StarCraft to come as we have the GSL finals coming up in just a few days. And then, of course, the global finals. I mean, this is it. The, the final, everyone's going to come together. We see how Cyril performs against the best in Korea. I can't be more stoked. No, it's a big celebration of StarCraft and everything that Blizzard does for gaming in general, and it's it's just an amazing way to end the year. And, and with these storylines yeah. kind of coalescing into that moment, I'm just that much more excited. I, I, I think Cyril can do it, and I really want him to. We've never, I, I mean, I've been going to BlizzCon since Brood War days. We've never had something like this where a foreigner could stand up to the traditional monsters that are the Koreans, and, and maybe he can. I agree with everything that Jeff said, but it's indeed so much more because of the year that Sarah has had, because of all the things that he's shown us. And of course, Neep was also incredibly dominant last year, and we really had hopes and dreams that he would do well, and Neep absolutely had the skill to do well, but this is just another level Different. of domination. Like, he leveled up from Neep in 2017, which we really thought no foreigner was gonna do. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for coming and playing great commentary all over the weekend. And thank you to all the awesome production staff and all the other casters for coming out here and making this such an excellent event. And the biggest thanks of all to you guys for tuning in and making StarCraft such an amazing community and everything that it is. That does it here for the 2018 World Championship Series Circuit. We'll see you at the Global Finals.